Now let's talk to Bob in Westchester. How are you, Bob? I'm great. How are you? Well, thank I, you. First, I want to say that I never missed a show, and I really appreciate wow, it. Wow, that's listening. And I just want to say that I really appreciate uh, the topic you're covering this morning regarding uh, full-blown AIDS and uh, the fact that just because people um, lead a lifestyle that where they get the full-blown AIDS, it doesn't mean they're going to H-E double hockey sticks just because they've, uh, you know, gotten the full-blown AIDS either from having an unclean taint or from being BM eaters on the Don and Mike show. And I think that it really is uh, interesting that uh, although I believe I am going to H-E double hockey sticks just for... Uh, well, anyway, uh, we hope that... <laughs> Some interesting people. The Don and Mike Show. And they'll say what they wish. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Here they are. Oh, there they are, bastards. Here they are, starting defense for your Miami Dolphins. Defense, defense, Look at them. Defense, 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 defense. I hate that. I hated him yesterday. Based on a true story, he was a neo-Nazi with one true enemy. Himself, a man of faith. A man of hate and his soul torn apart. Viewer discretion advised. Rob Spiewak! First time in franchise history that Miami wore the brown shirt. Know that? Good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. The Widow Warren Zevon and all the ships at sea. Yeah. These two guys are closer than Rich Gannon's not-so-mildly crossed eyes. <laughs> Don Geronimo and Mike Romero! You know, he thinks it about everybody. Last night I'm on the phone with him during the game, and he says, Look, Rich Gannon is cross eyed. Cross eyed Rich Gannon. <laughs> Except Rob, he can see the whole field at once. The Dixie Chicks are cross eyed. Rich Gannon's not cross eyed. Look at him. He's cross eyed. 307. Much more music time. Don and Mike show. A new episode on this Monday. Monday. September 8th. Right. 106.7. WJFK Washington. 105.7, Live 105, Baltimore, 95.9, 96 Rock, Ocean City. You call us at 877-365-3636. Hi, Don and Mike. Buzz Burbank here. Hi, oh, I, I Don. Is anyone listening? Hey, what happened? Shut up. Did you wash the ass today? Did someone call for a doctor? Well, here we all are. Hi, yes, we're uh, we're here. We're queer. We're doing the show. Hope you had a great weekend. I had a good weekend. I know Mike had part of a good weekend based on his phone calls to me. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I chatted with Buzz. Yes. Uh, chatted uh, incredibly lengthy, drawn-out, sermon-like conversations with my buddy Rob. Ah, yes. Sermon-like. On everything. Well, you know, because I, I find the need on a football Sunday to preach. Ah, I see. Yeah. I, you know, it's not Rob doing the sermonizing. It's me doing... Rob is simply the receptacle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and absorb it. And you, you know, absorb the knowledge. He's the, he's the receptacle, he's the sponge, and it's not so much knowledge that I throw Rob's way, it's anger. Sponge Rob. Anger and opinion. Anger, and it, and it, it would go from everything from Rush Limbaugh being on, on TV to Brett Favre being retarded. So would it be mm. safe to say that, that we, we simply did not get enough of each other during our truncated week because of the holiday it must be and we had to simply communicate because it sounds like everybody communicated over the weekend. I, I have a theory on this i have a theory on this that when you're in a tight spot you you rally yeah. with with your friends and, okay and right now i got news for you this show <laughs> is in a real tight spot yeah tighter yeah. Tighter than the spot between Britney Spears' legs. Wow. Right. Which, I'm, which I'm guessing is wider than I had originally thought it was. Oh, I would say so. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, but then uh, let's let's uh, pick someone who... Uh, tighter than the spot between the late Mother Teresa's legs. Okay. Because I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, that probably was like G.I. Joe down there. Well, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because she was Mother Teresa. And she, knows, she might be uh, sainted. Right? That she might yeah, they're talking about her becoming a saint. That's Wash right. my feet. Wash my feet. Wash the toes. Any, between the toes. <laughs> any tightness uh, prediction on, on Brenda Vaccaro? <laughs> oh. oh. She's loose. Yeah. You think? That's, that's, like, that's a, like an airline hanger. It's like a gigantic rubber band. <laughs> okay. One, of those, one, of those, one of those, I mean, like, like big, like, carrot top novelty. So you think we're in a tight spot now? Anyway. I think we're in a tight spot.
I sure do. Again? I sure do. Well, I think it's the same tight spot oh, we were in okay. last week. All right. Yeah, it's the same stuff. Just nothing's nothing's changed, and, and I don't know if anything's going to change. It's like, you know, if nothing changes, uh, I'm... I'm going to be super pissed. Well, I th see, here's the thing. I think that they are counting on the fact that the longer that things go and don't change, that we're going to do something that makes things change. No. You, you got what I'm saying? Oh. That even though we're saying 1067, 1057, 959, mm -hmm. we're giving the time. And, like we're going to give them an excuse or something? Yeah, and the weather and stuff. We've still never talked about a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff mm -mm. with... Uh, our network, <laughs> Westwood One. So I, you know, just from my standpoint, that's what's going on. Mm. And I know that it's gotten to the point now. On on Friday, when I left the uh, left the station, of course, as soon as I got in the car, the cell phone was ringing, and it was the no longer acting general manager, yeah. who of course wanted to just make sure that my weekend was ruined by a phone call with him <laughs> that I'm sure wasn't good news because if it was good news. He would have left a message. Mm. And that's the great thing about a cell phone. <laughs> a cell phone is even better than call waiting because with call waiting... One million percent better. Mm -hmm. With call waiting, you, you, it's a constant battle. that you, you, you let somebody down and you tell somebody to F off, but you do it in this regard. Say I'm on the phone with Rob and, and Buzz calls. Mm -hmm. And I say to Rob, oh, i got to take this call. What I'm saying to Rob in essence is, well, I'm bored talking to you. I'd rather talk to Buzz. The great thing about a cell phone is that nobody's feelings get hurt because I see it ringing. I see, oh, Alan Limewand. I just turn the phone off. Don't answer. I don't answer it. Then I wait a minute. I turn it back on to see if he's left a message. Mm. If it was good news or if it was something important, he would, would have left a message. So I'm continuing my motoring on Friday night, going home. <laughs> phone rings again. Alan Limewand again. Mm -hmm. Again. I mean, no, I'm not go at At 7.15 on Friday night... I'll be damned if I'm going to let him ruin my weekend. Right. Do you keep it with you when you're down at the beach, or do you like lay it down a lot when you're at the no, beach? No, and, and we were at home all this week. We didn't go to the beach. And I'm just curious about what you're talking about. Now I just want to, you know, me. it's always about me. You know, it's always about me. I don't turn it on. You know, I see, that's what I thought. On the weekend, I don't turn it on. Because, because you know, sometimes it's you know when we were on vacation when I was trying to you know you, you know when I I just would hate to think it was ringing and you looked at it and you said oh it's Mike. No, and, see, you're not on that list. Yeah, I didn't think so. Good news for you. I just wanted to check though, being as insecure as I am. M Mike, you are. Of what, course, what? I never call you either. <laughs> you know, I mean, I really don't bother you a lot. Oh, relevant. Last, you're relevant. Mm -hmm. You're. I relevant. am relevant to you. Yes, and I appreciate you uh, reinforcing. You're relevant. That. Buzz is relevant. Robbie's relevant. Charlie's relevant. Uh, Joe is borderline relevant, and and beyond that, you know, just about, and of course my wife is relevant, my son. But beyond that, everybody else is fair game. Even now, our agent, I don't necessarily know if I want to take the call from him because mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's blah 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 because <laughs> it's because it's really nothing. So you know, here we are hanging hanging on by a pubic hair, wow. doing this uh, alleged nationally syndicated show. Let me do just uh, take a second here to to wish a happy birthday greetings to my mother in law. Big Frida, who today turns eight zero. Oh, this wow. is the big eight zero. The big eight That's eight a zero. huge yeah, birthday. Happy birthday, Frida! It's Way a, to go, big. We ought to call her. It's a big one. I, I, I think she might be embarrassed by it. Well, but I mean, it's a it's a big one. I mean, Hi, this is Don's mother-in-law, Big Frida. There she is. When my mom celebrated the big eight zero, it's a huge, it's a great milestone. I mean, most people don't don't, don't well, we, get that. Well, we spoke to her this morning. Most men don't. Get, most men don't get there. <laughs> yeah. Is that yeah, sad? Literally. Yeah. Uh, Doesn't that suck? It very much is. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, about men. And, uh, and maybe I, I will call my mother-in-law here in a second. I don't know if you caught during the games yesterday, the new NFL Viagra pill with Ditka as the spokesman. Is Ditka hawking Viagra? Yeah, except they don't ever come out and say that it's Viagra. No, like with the Rafael Palmero ads in baseball, they do the same thing. But, they they uh, don't really say what it's for. Hold on. Here it is. There's, a, there's an ad for it. I saw an ad. So here it is right here. New choice here now. Levitra, proud sponsor of the NFL. Levitra. Levi is that a buzz? Levitra, yeah. Le oh, look. Ask for it by name. And how could it be that Buzz is holding a box of the product? <laughs> I, don't, I guess I'm on, I'm on the mailing list, apparently. I don't know. Well, they just sent it to you? No, I mean, I, I, I have it. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> wow, it's, stu it's stuff that makes your... Uh, yeah. Your, you, you, your baloney... Did uh, they, like, contact... You could make tons... Of if, money, if, if only you, I had you more. You make tons of tons of number three. No, don't they pay people gazillions of dollars to endorse that product? 
Uh, yeah, sometimes they do. But, but you, you, so you're a user? I, I have experimented with it, yes. <laughs> what <laughs> hasn't? What hasn't he experimented Excuse me, with? Rob, I just kicked my water over that. <laughs> wow. Is yeah. that the pills or the ointment? <laughs> the, the pills. The ointment, you just have to keep rubbing and rubbing. I'm waiting for the suppositories. <laughs> keep waiting. Did you, did you catch the very subtle symbolism in the commercial of the guy who's maybe like 55 and he, he can't throw the football through the hole? Yes. And, and then <laughs> I didn't it, think of that it, when I saw that ad. It's a football hanging yeah, from a no, rope. I know exactly what you're talking about. And he, he throws it through the hole. And, and his and wife comes out when he's throwing it through the hole and she's like, whoa. And then he throws her down. And, <laughs> um, oh, wow. Takes her from behind. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't think we should to get off of this, so to speak. You, you, you have it. Uh, yes. You, you held up the... How he many has, pills do you well, have? There's just, there's just one left. He has everything. How many have you one. taken, Buzz? Uh, uh, two. You took two. So Why do you have it this, with you? Three in this little sample. My, my doctor uh, gave me a sample, as doctors are allowed to do. He, uh, I hate to be personal. Feel free to ask. Do you have any type of dysfunction? No. No. It's an enhancement, Buzz. Or for some people, it's a recreational thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but why would your doctor give you something if it was recreational? Well, because Buzz has a cool doctor, Doctor Bombay. Do you have a cool doctor? Yeah, I do. But but it really, he didn't give it to me for recreational purposes. He gave it to me for experimental purposes. So did you lie to your physician and say no. I I need? Uh... No, there was no need for lying. <laughs> you know, I'm grilling you. Yeah, you. Are. I'm grilling you yeah. here because I'm curious. Yeah, we're, we're talking about prescription medication. There's only so much I can. Okay, say. can I ask you a question? Sure. This would be for all the people that might be in need of that product, mm -hmm. Viagra or what is it called, Levitra? Levitra. So we got Viagra, Levitra. What would the difference be between Viagra tell, and Levitra? You can. One of the products is endorsed by Ditka. <laughs> is that is that is there anything more than that? Uh, this one's supposed to last a little longer, six hours instead of four. Like Ditka. But I don't find it to be as powerful. Because everybody's different, but it can don't have that you effect. You think you shouldn't be experimenting with? Isn't that for people that can't? Shouldn't get wood? you have told me this thirty years ago? <laughs> <laughs> you know him. He's Mister Experiment. He's a science project over there. <laughs> anything that has to do with uh, blood flow uh -huh. and your ticker scares me. Actually, they now believe this is good for your heart, unless you have a heart condition or there are contraindicated medications that and you're taking. Not only blood flow it's yeah. to your heart, but uh, blood flow to your wiener. Yes. <laughs> That's what makes it work. Yeah, I know, That's I what know. I was talking I about. I mean, I, right. I, when I was talking about blood flow. I, I understand the interstate of the body, though. You know, the, the, it comes from the heart mm -hmm. and then goes down to your wiener. I know, I, I, yeah. I know how the interstate works. <laughs> well, it relaxes all the blood vessels, correct? Well, now yes. I've got, listen, guys. Now I've got a reason to call my mother-in-law. <laughs> Levitra. Yes. And I'm sure they From the makers of Bayer Aspirin. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. And made, rare every day. made popular by Mike Ditka. Who knew he had a soft D? I'm going to call my friend Ron. Hey, Ditka. My former neighbor. What's wrong with your D? <laughs> hey, Ditka. Of course, you know. If he's hawking it. Mr. Softy. <laughs> Not like it's anything special. <laughs> this is my Ditka. I couldn't get one up. I couldn't rub one out on game day, even while looking at the photo of Ricky Williams in the wedding dress. <laughs> but now with La Vitra, look at that. Hello? No one is available uh. to take your call. Hello? Leave a message. Are you there, Big Frida? <laughs> Big Frida? It's me, your, your loving son-in-law, and everybody on the show calling to tell you happy 80th birthday. Hello, yeah. Big Frida. Hi. I'm sorry you're not there, and uh, Buzz has sexual issues. <laughs> I think you've Always. known that. I think you've known that, but Always. we're finding out more about that. Anyway, happy birthday. Love you. Love you a long time. Happy birthday, happy Big birthday. Frida. Happy birthday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Are we clear? We're clear. And, and we're out. Now, back to the previous <laughs> subject. <laughs> Didn't Mike Ditka, isn't he a famous heart attack sufferer? Yes, he is. So d is this better for the ticker? Uh, and Actually, all of them, because they all increase circulation, can be good for the heart, depending on the patient and what medications they're taking. What about what's on the heart? Or, excuse me, the, the heart on. <laughs> supposed to be good for that, but again, everybody's different. Gotcha. Can I ask one more question, Don? <laughs> sure, Mike. I'm sorry. I know I'm monopolizing the opening of the show, but I, all right. I have, I'm have. i so curious. Just take a second. It's bro. my boyish curiosity. I know, but ask personal questions. If you want to know about the product, call a doctor. I mean, if you want to ask I him, don't want to know, but I don't need I don't need anything in I don't that area. Well, then, I got one right now. <laughs> just, I had one when I came into the studio and I saw your shirt. I like it. A lot. And it makes me... <laughs>
Now, it makes me now why crazy. Is it, now, why is it if we have a hot girl in here and I say to Rob, hey, take a look at this, you get grossed out. I do not have one, and I didn't get one from looking at your shirt, and you know that. Liar! Because <laughs> it's a beautiful shirt. Liar! It, it the not. difference is when you say that to Rob, you really do have one, don't you? Yes. <laughs> there it is. That's it. The question I would have, does it really, like, make it better when you take that stuff? Yeah. Like, to, like, to the point where you'd get addicted, you wouldn't want to have sex without it? No, I don't think so. I mean, I, you know, I've never taken enough of it to know if, you, and I've never heard about anybody taking getting enough of it. I think you take, so it's like one pill. Yeah, well, you want to eat them like M and M's before you're gonna one or two, depending on the person. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just Mike... th I'm gonna catch him in the hallway. <laughs> Mike did guy take fifteen. I'm filled with curiosity. <laughs> with my coffee in the morning. Because uh, you know, I mean, if it's a re if it's like a. a Mike, it's like if it's Viagra. like a uh, uh, aphrodisiac. You know? But listen, no off no offense to Buzz and to the other uh, men who have uh, <laughs> penile problems. <laughs> I think you should count yourself among the lucky if you don't have to take a pill four times a day. If I have to, you're even luckier if you don't have to take the pill and you take one anyway. Okay, well, why if you can do it naturally? Why do you need to enhance it with... Uh, because, which is, I'll, I'll which speak is, for Buzz, maybe it's just not what it used to be. Which is stronger, steel or titanium? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. This is like hooking a nitrous system up to Buzz's car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure, the car runs fine, but you right. put a little nitrous in there. Sure. Like the Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just, he's just trying to make well, his car go faster. But here's the thing. Get a few uh -huh. more years out of that car. You know, and, and, and who am I to brag? Right. But I am... I think I already got the Batmobile between my legs. Well, you know, God I bless you. I mean, that's, that's good. That's I mean, I've already thing. got, you know, atomic batteries to power, mm -hmm. uh, power to speed, fire coming out of the back. <laughs> you know, I, I come out of the bat cave and I'm ready. And I would say to you, in that case, and I'm the same way, I, I don't want, I, I wouldn't want to... <laughs> don't mess with well, I, mean, I mean, like down the road, they come out and they go, uh, for those men that might have been taking Viagra during the uh, early uh, 2001 and 2002, uh, it seems now that an appendage can grow out of the top of your forehead, a horn. Yeah, That's where I'm walking. I'll, I'll be dead by then. All right. You'll be okay. Buzz will be okay. <laughs> Listen, I'll say this in Buzz's... But I am also curious. In Buzz's corner, let me just say... I mean, if it made it better... In the 20-plus years I've known him, mm -hmm. he tries everything. He does. He tries everything. He's experimental that this way. This has been, uh, this is part of his history. Look, All right. it's documented. If you take the pill, mm -hmm. does it make it better? I think so, yes. All right, that's an honest answer. Again, depending on the person, how much you've had to eat. Have you ground up the pills kind of and given them to your wife? No, no. Okay. Intensity of number three better? Doesn't seem to work on women. Uh, yeah, it can be because you would tend to go longer. Okay. For me, you know what that is right there. Yeah, right there. Thank Draw back. You. I'm with. I, Draw back. I, I, I side with you. Draw back. Make you go longer. It's one of the great things about being a guy. And See, going longer means you're not getting. You're not. <laughs> Thank you. But but you get a bigger one when you get it. Yeah, but if you have to work harder to get it, I don't want that. Oh, it doesn't work though. Now here you go. Here's me getting ready to have sex with my wife. Atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. Roger. Ready to move out. Right here, and then... That's it. Done. Done. <laughs> done. No, no bat pills needed. It's a pretty interesting discussion for the opening. You know, it's a hell of an opening for a Monday. I think so. It's a damn, damn fine program so far. 324. So. Don and Mike show. On 106.7 Washington, 105.7 Baltimore. So we're in agreement we're not going to mess with that stuff. 95.9 Ocean City. Oh, the, the pills? For the for your yeah. for your D and B yeah so it's abs not till I got to yeah not not till it's absolutely necessary not if I got loaded can you can you take it when you drink yeah I might pop one if I was drunk I'll tell you one today and here's a reason that I know I don't need it I'm a, a possibly the only male that's watching the debut of the L and D genitals. <laughs> Daytime talk show. You know, I would if I had known it was on today that it started today, I would watch it because I think she is a very funny lady. I agree. So I'm, I'm watching. You know, I'm, I'm waiting for the press conferences to come on ESPN on Monday when they trot the coaches out, and I love watching the coaches who have lost who just say the same crap. And I'm, and I'm watching it, and Jennifer Aniston is the first guest. Oh, good. That's a good pull for your first guest, and she's sitting down and she's wearing a tank top and just and I'm sitting there watching this, and I realize. It's happening. It's happening in my pants. 
Just with uh, Jennifer Aniston fully clothed? Because I was not listening to what Ellen DeGenitals was saying. I certainly wasn't listening to what dumb Jennifer Aniston was saying. I was just staring at her chest. And then I would go from her chest to her pretty face and back down to her big chest and back to her pretty face. Was she wearing a bra? Yeah, but it didn't do any good. She violates the bra rules. Yeah, and Ellen asked... Bust right through a bra. <laughs> Ellen asked her at one point, are you cold? <laughs> did she know she did not? She did, I swear to God she cool. did. And Jennifer Aniston said, no, I'm, I'm hot. I'm, re I'm real, real hot. And I'm sitting there going, you're looking down at my gym shorts. You're goddamn right, honey. You are hot, hot as can be. How did Ellen look? Ellen? Um, like Ellen. <laughs> Hello, hotline. Sugar Bear. Darling. If, if Buzz brings one on Saturday, I'll try one. All right, well, now I would be up for that. Uh, we we're socializing with the Burbanks yeah, but, this I weekend. I mean, not with them, not right. at that second. Well, okay. I know, but, but that... Later on, you know, going private. But here's the thing, though. With Did you, Frida I... just say she'd try it? Yeah, but mm -hmm. I, I need something that would speed you up, not something that would make you last longer. Because you're, you're already... That might the... actually, with women... It might work. If that intensifies in the female, in the female world... If it makes it more intensive, that does speed you up. Yes, yeah, yeah, it would have a different effect on females. The jury's still out on whether it helps women, but it does increase blood circulation, so theoretically, I guess it could help some women. All right, Buzz, I tell you what, Saturday night we're going mm -hmm. out with the wives. All right. you, don't don't use that pill. No. Save that pill. I mean, if you have a spare. We'll, oh, yeah. We'll grind it up. We'll, don't bogart we'll, that. <laughs> we'll put it in my wife's wine. <laughs> would you take? I can actually swallow it for yeah. real. That's would you take one as just an experiment? No. Just for the show? No. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm very protective of my genitals and, and, and the things that come out of them. I completely he's understand liver. that. He's a clean liver. He won't take anything foreign in his body. Well, now listen, I've broken every rule God knows in my life with the exception of that. Mm -hmm. Now, if somehow, if, you know... It happened again and find its way into your drink? <laughs> and then somebody told you at the end of dinner? Then I guarantee I wouldn't be able to get it up. That the, the you know remember the biggest sexual organ in your body is your brain. That's right. That I uh, my now don't look at me funny. <laughs> the way you said that, it, but that's a fact. It's true. You, you look so serious when you said that. Because if because if that's somebody, what made me laugh. <laughs> even if somebody faked me out and said I put that in your drink, I would immediately know I'd, I'd be soft. Well, I don't think you need to do it for the show because you have proven reaction from Buzz already. You have the male point of view. I'm willing as a great personal sacrifice. To give the female point of view. Yeah, you know, the only thing I was thinking, Frida, is that Buzz, uh, I don't know if you know this, about, I know you don't believe this about Buzz, but uh, Don and I both know the truth. Uh, Buzz is not always on the up and up about stuff like this. He's he's uh, he's hanky, he's tricky. What do you mean by that? He's a trickster. You know, he, he's not. A, How do you mean that? He always he always like uh, he's like those guys on the other half. You know, he says the things that the ladies want to hear. You see, he doesn't give us. The guys on the show, the real lowdown on what's going I, on. I think the information that Buzz is relaying is well documented. Mm -hmm. All right, it darling. Is. Well, Thank listen, you. I'm up for the experiment. There she goes defending you again, Buzz. I'm up for, I'm up for the too. experiment. Buzz, bring the pill on Saturday. Okay. <laughs> bring the pill. <laughs> we'll have my wife chew it up and eat it in front of us, and then we'll see what happens. Well, good. at the end of the evening, because I don't want to... You know, How I fast does it take to react? Uh, it takes about an hour to kick in. The new one, an hour on a full stomach, 15 minutes on an empty stomach. I think you'll be okay there. Plan. He's like, ask the pharmacist. He's got a thin candy show. <laughs> All right, baby. we, we got to plan this better because I want dinner. I mean, I have my priorities, so I don't want any of this empty stomach business. <laughs> yeah, so no, just thank you'll be fine. And, on, and then we'll be tired when we get home. So, on on you know, Saturday night. We, we can't wait an hour either. So we'll have to... We go out with the Burbank Saturday night. We come home, and, and, and in essence, I'll be having sex with Mike Ditka. Yeah, right. you'll, be, you'll be taking the Mike Ditka D pill. <laughs> in case, in the, it's an interesting way of putting it. In your case, it'll be the Mike Ditka V pill. I'll look at my Palm Pilot, see when I can squeeze it and you in, okay? All right, babe. Love right. you. Love you, sweetie. See ya. Bye. Sex with Ditka or Buzz, because it's actually Buzz's pill. <laughs> It's oh. going to be a hell of a party. You know they swing. <laughs> it always is. I know they do. I, I know they do, and she knows that they do. But if you take it like before you eat dinner, she's right. Especially the guys. You guys might might be ordering a whole pie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> listen. <laughs> I just mentioned that What's they were... What's that man doing in the hall?
Oh my God! 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 Uh, Gray Davis. Uh, oh, listen, I got weekend stuff here, but I, I, just, I saw Mike in the office before the show. I love the fact that this guy Gray Davis is now finally making fun of Arnold mm -hmm. because he can't say California. And I don't have Arnold's exact response, but when Arnold was answering the question of the fact that he can't pronounce California, he used broken English again. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He was trying to, and he had the curled lip, Arnold, angry response. The thing that pisses me off. I can say California. He does not like the way that I say California because I don't say California. But the words, the word that do use in this situation, he, he doesn't like the word recall. That, that was how it ended up. You know, and what, what irritates me with the great state of California and the, uh, the media coverage out there of this race is they didn't get that. They didn't yeah. get video of Gray Davis saying that about Arnold. They had him, you know, saying it was just a joke. But I would have liked to hear him if he's having a little exchange, you know. You should elect the governor that can pronounce California. That's great. So good for, uh, good for, good for Gray Davis. Um, uh, before we get to the weekend, i got a ton of weekends. So let's get to the phones. Uh, hello, uh, WJFK and others. Uh, Don and Mike show. Hello. Don and Mike. How are you? Guys, how are you? Uh, we're doing great. Uh, I have penile re uh, retinal dysfunction. Oh, you do? Yes, I'm 36 years old. Uh, I got it because I have diabetes, and I lost uh, everything uh, three years ago. And again, sir, what is it that you suffer from? Uh, erectile dysfunction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We feel for you. The audience feels for you, sir. Yeah, very sympathetic. Do I... you take anything for it? They're with you. Well, I tried, uh, I tried Viagra. My doctor gave me Viagra, but it didn't work. Uh-huh. Uh, I had, uh, one pill, then I tried two pills, and one, at one time I tried three pills at one time, wow. nothing worked. Well, did you try, did you ever try actually putting them right inside? I uh, mean, the hole? Inside yeah. the hole? <laughs> Pretty much. That's, but the only thing I had that, I mean, we that, say the pee hole? <laughs> why, why take the pill? Let your body break it down with the amino acids and everything else. And, and, and why not just put it right in? Because it would burn a hole clean through it. <laughs> and if it worked, it would be like a BB gun. <laughs> <laughs> you, you put you you'd put your eye out. Well, since since the pill didn't work, my doctor prescribed something else. It was an injection that I had to take. Ooh. Oh, like no. every time you want to get one, you take an injection. Yeah, but the the problem was the injection. All right, yeah. enough. Goodbye. Oh. Thanks. See ya. See ya, freak. Hello, Don and Mike show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that makes him feel better. I'm sorry, <laughs> Buzz. I'm sorry. It was just it was a gut, it was a guttural reaction. I understand. You know, to getting a like, freak. God, you mention that every time you wanted to have sex. They Hello? say it really hurts too. Yeah, I was. I, I have to take uh, blood pressure medicine, and I found that the side effect of blood pressure medicine is giving me small D. It does not. Typical. Ask your doctor for new medicine. No. So what I did was I started suffer with a high blood pressure. I, yeah, I started. Well, I mean, you'd think that high blush, blood pressure would help that. What's good? A good F session or a heart attack? Well. You know, if it's going to be your last, your last deed you do on Earth, I'd rather have a a, a good. Yeah, but there's a happy medium. I mean, you probably can, can find a way. You don't have to make sure just to, you, you want to get laid one time and you, and you go off your medicine to make your head explode. Well, but it might be the greatest sexual pleasure you've ever had, though. That kind of, come on. Um, imagine. You really think so? Come and go at the same time? Now, how often do you have those, you know? I mean, really, you know, the the kind where you just, you know, you start crying afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't happen that often. <laughs> oh, every once in a while. Every once in a while you have that, but I mean, you can't count on that. And then you go off your medication and you go, that wasn't as good as I expected. <laughs> and you lock up. Hey. Hello, Don and Mike, WJFK. Hey, what up, Don? What up, Mike? Hey. Hey, what up, Buzz? Hey. Hey, Buzz, get your lazy ass up and do something for a change, man. Stop sitting around there and laughing. <laughs> but, okay. First of all, what the hell was that about? Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis. I want to thank you guys because Jerry Lewis <laughs> sent me a package last weekend because of you guys. Well, did he send you some penis pills? No, he, he, sent, me, he sent me a package of crutches and he sent me some eyeglasses. 
Now I can walk and I can see, thanks to the Don and Mike show. Jerry, Jerry Lewis sent you glasses and crutches. Yes, crutches. Really? So you can walk and see? Yeah, I can walk and see. And before that, you were uh, unable to walk and blind? <laughs> Man, I was crawling around the house. Bumping into things? Before the show. Hey, Rob, we've still got all those Jerry tapes we've never not played, right? I want to thank you, Don. I want to thank you, Mike. Thank you guys for help save my life. Okay, there you go. It's another Jerry Lewis success story. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry sent him glasses. And crutches. All right. Hello, Don and Mike Show, JFK, Live 105, 96 Rock. Hello. Hello, I'd like to t speak with Don and Mike, please. <laughs> oh, please. Must we, must, we, must we dance this dance every day? When you, uh, when you hear the distinctive whoosh on the telephone, and I say to you... Turn the box down with the knobs on it. I says, <laughs> Don and Mike Show, JFK, Live 105, 96 Rock. And you're Don. still... Turn the box with You're the knob still down. listening to the radio. And now I think he's gone. And then he just hung up. He just... He he's hung so up. so sad. He hung up. But we were going to give him some free, free Levitra. Because I, <laughs> because I could not control my anger. Hello, Don and Mike show on JFK <laughs> at Live 105, 96 Rock. What's wrong with you, Don? <laughs> I don't know, Mike. My D is fine. <laughs> Here, have a little Levitra. Hello there, Don and Mike show. Hey, JFK. how about that Brett Favre? Mm. How about him? He's a retard. What can I say? Thank God I didn't start him yesterday. You know, we're going to do an entire segment today about our, about our fantasy football teams. And you know, he didn't look good, Domingo. No, he didn't look good yesterday. Thank you, though. That was great. Thank you. We, that was <laughs> yeah. great, wasn't it? it was really great. That was a good call. It's like uh, Jack Kent Cook meets... Uh... <laughs> Kermit. Hello, Don and Mike, JFK, Live 105, 96 Rock. Hello. Say, so, isn't your biggest sexual organ your skin? <laughs> no, no, no. Your biggest sexual organ is your brain. I think your skin's a lot bigger than your brain. Do you uh, do you have sex with your elbow? I mean, well, I guess you could have sex with your you elbow. You can have sex with That's any fun. part of your body. How smart is your skin, though? My skin is well, uh, my skin is what? brilliant. I riddle you that. <laughs> By biggest, Don meant most important. Well, most important is one thing. Let's be a little clear here. All right, let's be a little clear about your brain size. <laughs> the fact that you didn't understand when I said the well, brain no, is your, the I brain is your biggest it. biggest uh, uh, sexual uh, uh, organ. I understood it. You are clear. You get the Get impression right. that his biggest sexual organ might be his hand. <laughs> his brain has the skin on it. <laughs> Big hands. Anything else? Uh, yeah. Hey, you know, I, I, have, I, I had newfound respect for him at the end there. And there he goes. When you're in doubt, he didn't just hang up, he burped. And, and, he's, and he's gone. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike Show, JFK, Live 105, 96 Rock. Hello. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, buddy. I want to know, how come I got hung up on by your screener every time I said I was from Toronto? I don't listen. I don't know. I don't know if it's a problem with the with the telephone. You know, we had a problem on Friday with the show with some of the lines working, some of the lines not working. What can we do for you? Well, I, I want to know. You guys see the Joe Schmo show last night? Now, see, that's probably right. why the guy hung up on you. It probably wasn't the fact you're from Toronto. It was probably the fact that you were mentioning the Joe Schmo show. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, baby. Can I get some birthday spankings? <laughs> How old are you? Thirty. 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 Are you a smoker? No. Hmm. Who's the celeb you most resemble? Uh, the Doritos girl. No. 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 You got to be more current than the, than the Doritos girl. I remember the Doritos girl. Come on, someone from today. Someone from today's hot modern pop culture. Oh, and hold on. Boy, do I have an issue with USA Today. Was it just last week that I was mocked on this show for Benifer uh, J Fleck? Mm -hmm. But we all decided that Benifer was was good. Yes. Look right here in USA Today, page three D. Look how they're referring to to him. And Benifer. 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 Benifer countdown. Mm -hmm. Once again, you are ahead of your time. Mm -hmm. Benifer countdown, and you mind. Now, now wait a minute. I think they owe you money. Benifer. Sure that's that. mine. That is yours. Really, I made that up. That is your intellectual property. Mm -hmm. Benifer. That's mine. Now, J. Fleck was tossed around by the guys, and we ended mm -hmm. up coming up with... I don't remember. J. Fleck, I thought, is what we ended up on. Or, or I had... Uh, the original was uh, Benifer... 
Jaflak. Jaflak. Yes. Right, Jaflak. And you guys made it Benefer Jaflak. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Benefer Jaflak. But anyway, Benefer, that's mine. Mm-hmm. USA Today. That's and there they go. Well, you know, they listen. They're right down the street. That's, that's right. mine. Anyway, honey, you got to tell us who you look like. Um, Angelina Jolie. Mm-hmm. Hmm. You've got big, beautiful breasts? Of course. 34D. 34D. Well, all right, I... I'll smack you around a little it's bit. It's been a long time. You don't believe her, Rob? <clears throat> Rob doesn't believe you. And Buzz, he thinks she's cross-eyed. And, oh, she you know, the thing is, I'm not getting wood now talking to you. So I got I got the feeling maybe you're not as beautiful as you're saying. Maybe I'll have to take a pill in order to get worked up to spank you. Would you like this, Levitra? <laughs> have you ever taken Levitra, ma'am? No. Never had that problem. Mm, not <laughs> if you look like uh, Angelina Jolie. Are you, are you in a relationship now? No. Um, are you on something like Match.com or I'm Desperate.com? No. What happened? What, why did he leave you? <laughs> <laughs> career person. Rob. Career person. So he left you for his career. And, and, when, you know, and what? He's stripping. Pardon me? What? He did not like me stripping. Oh, you're a stripper. Uh-huh. Yes. Now, why didn't you just... Well, hello! <laughs> why, did... la, 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 la. why didn't you just say that from the beginning? Welcome! <laughs> you're a stripper! <laughs> well, good for you. Right. We love strippers. Pull down Can your... I get a threesome? Pull down your pants. Can I get Buzz and Mike and Don? You want? You mean you want all three of us to spank you? Yeah. So every you want a ten, piece? ten wax each? Yeah. Do you want to bring Levitra in on this? You know, he has gotten the, the show kind of jump-started with that Levitra thing. He's got me all excited. Normally, Don and I are the, you know, we spank. Yeah, it's usually them. I don't know. It's our thing. Yeah, it'll, but, uh, it'll spoil it for Don, I think. Go ahead, Buzz. You can take mine. You can take mine. Really? Well, no, wait a minute. Well, no, that now now you're not just going to quit. Yes, you're going to give him 15 and not play at all? Yeah. yeah. You're not even going to bring out your frying pan? Well, I got it. I tell you what, maybe once I'll just smack her after you guys are done. Please. I'll just I'll give her one in the head. All right. I'll give her one in the arm, one in the leg. Very good. Cause just because I got it here. What are you going to use, Buzz? Oh, I thought I'd use my hand. I know I use my hand, Buzz. I see. Use your D, Buzz. Per- perhaps I'll... See, Mike, now, don't you want to drop out, too? She doesn't... Yeah, I'm she, out now. That's she doesn't I'm want any part no. of you or I. No, she doesn't. Yeah, use your D, Buzz. She wants you. You give her all 30 with your D. Go ahead, Buzz. <laughs> Pull out your D. All right, Buzz okay. is going to spank you with his D. With his medically oh. enhanced D. <laughs> go ahead. Get her with your $6 million D, Buzz. Okay. Here we go, ma'am. You ready? Yes. Okay. One. Oh. Two. Oh. Three. Oh. Four. More. Five. Harder. Six. Hello? Oh. Seven. Oh. Eight. Yes. Nine. Yes. Ten. Oh. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Here you go. Happy birthday, honey. You may cry. Happy birthday. Thank you. Here's one more. There you go. Happy, happy birthday. Just oh, up. you missed Rob was going to have a message for you. Hang, hang I up. think he still has it. Hang up. Rob, the message? What's that? What's the message for that lady? Oh, whore! Whore, right. <laughs> All right, this is the, uh, we're currently contest list, but we do have stuff to give away, so let's just start today with a call 100 at 877-365-3636. Good. From WJFK, from Live 105, from 96 Rock, dotted mic on JFK, 344 will be right WJFK. back. WJFK. Hey, Mike. Yes, um, It is really great doing these singular commercials. Don? Mike? My favorite part is when you tell the people to call 1-866-SINGULAR. Not me, Mike. My fave. Excuse me. I'll take that again. Not me, Mike. Right. My favorite part what? is when you talk about great calling plans 
like Family Talk. You are right, Don. Family Talk allows you to add a line to your existing calling plan for just nine ninety nine per line per month. Your entire family can share one pool of minutes, one bill, and one easy plan. You see, what we're doing is reading this in the same style that President Bush read his address to the nation last night. <laughs> Keep connected, keep it simple, switch to singular. Call my friends at singular at 186singular, comma, log on to singular.com, or visit any singular wireless store in your area. You want to take the last line? Uh, th th that part? Yes, 1866singular. Make sure to tell them Don and Mike sent you. Good job, Don. Great job, Mike. We're at the wrong one. Certain restrictions apply. Wait, okay, well, <laughs> see any what? Got a break. Okay, 354. Here's the weather for Washington, Baltimore, Ocean City. According to Buzz, are you making this up or is it real? Uh, half and half. No rain, but cloudy tonight, tomorrow. Low 65, high tomorrow, 75. JFK. Right now, 76 in D.C., 81 in Baltimore, 76 in Ocean City. Me? That's why the boss has sent me out here. They wanted me to make sure none of the other crews robbed the joint. Like these two f***ing balloon heads over here. They were going to try to bang us out of 200 grand? Yeah, right, I'm sure. WJFK. Yeah, sing our name. Everybody, what? Always the exception to every rule ever made. Don Geronimo and Michael Mera. And let's get a call 100. 354. A WJFK, etc. Live 105 and 96 Rock. Good. Uh, call number 100. This is good call. This is good. What is that? This is good. Call. Good. Good. Smoke. Smoke. Good. 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 This is good. Smoke. Hello there. Don and Mike show on WGFK. Hello. I am caller 100. Yes, darling. And what's your name? Any idea? Martha. Hi, Martha. Where are you from? Uh, Maryland. All right, Martha. Here you go. You've got uh, a $25 gift certificate to Applebee's. Try Applebee's never-ending basket of slow-smoked ribs smothered in sweet and tangy barbecue sauce. Now, I urge one of you listeners that wins this prize to eat that. And if not, in a, yeah, Mike, eat it. Go ahead, eat it. Eat it but, good. But not only that, but really, take them up on this challenge. Mm -hmm. Never-ending basket? Really? Could you really sit there for six or seven hours and say, Garçon, another basket, please? <laughs> My friends and I go to a rib place where they offer, uh, like, all you can eat. Or wow. as much as you can eat. That's and the way of putting it. We eat when we're, th we, eat when we're th we stop when we're through. Anyway, uh, that's Applebee's. Go check that and out. And that place, of course, is Applebee's. Of course. Check, check out, check out the, uh, the big, big brain of Brad. <laughs> <laughs> You've won an Inside the NFL prize pack. Check the premiere of HBO's Inside the NFL when Bob Costas, Chris Collinsworth, Dan Marino and Chris Carter return. That's Wednesday night at 10 on HBO. And you want a cradle to the grave prize pack and a free pizza in an order of breadsticks from Papa John's. I'll tell you one thing. We're worried about your cholesterol on this show. We are indeed. We're worried about your health. We're worried about carbs. We're worried about fat. Mm -hmm. Go to Applebee's, get the get get the never ending basket of ribs. I'm sure they'll bring you bread with that too. Go home, <laughs> go home, and then chase that with the. Uh, Free pizza and breadsticks from Papa John's. And they bring you extra butter if you ask for it. Order Cradle of the Grave tonight on demand, pay-per-view, starting every half hour on digital cable from Comcast. And uh, thanks for listening to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on uh, just a sec. That's a well-fed woman right there. There you go. That's right. We gave her the the never-ending basket. Mm -hmm. I like the never-ending. It's. I think never-ending is much nicer than all you can eat. Yes, or think all you can eat and kids eat free are overdone slogans in this country. Well, I know from Ocean City that they've changed a lot of the all you can eat. Yeah, because it's like is you know it's you might as well write, hello fat ass. Yeah, all now you can eat like put it in your mouth with a funnel. All you care to eat. All you uh -huh. care to That's eat. That's the new way they're putting it. All you care to eat. Well, the people that go to those places, though, as as somebody who goes to those places myself. It's really not all you care to eat. It's it's what you can what, what you can really manage in your. In your they don't stomach. care until until you see the mouse ear, you know. Until you see the rat claw, uh -huh. until you see the cat tail. All you care to eat until there's a dropping on your plate. <laughs> there you go. Um, 
Hello, Don and Mike show, WJFK, Live 105, 96 Rock. Hello. Hi, where can I get a list of um, places Mike plays in his band? Oh, that's uh, easy. We uh, we can... Um, I don't we can put it on our. Uh, we'll give you that. Why don't you uh, put that on wjfk.com? Thank you. Okay. Why don't you do that? Sure. Oh, that, 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 that you know that's a great segue <laughs> into the, the, the weekend stuff here. Uh-huh. Mike, was that your lead singer? Was <laughs> <laughs> she uh, looking for a list of some kind? <laughs> that, tell Lisa put it on the website. On WGFK.com. I, okay. I, I just don't know whether our, our website is... What? Our website is really effed up. All right, here's the deal. <laughs> I'll explain to you what's going on with this. Raymond runs the website. Oh, you mean the, the, the website for your band, Raymond Diaz? You're saying put a link up, right? Yeah, WJFK.com. Or even, forget yeah. that, just, just put the dates up on yeah. the Don and Mike page on WJFK.com. That's what I'll do. So, our website, WJFK.com, you might remember like a year ago, we, we did this thing called American Idiot. Yes. Where we had people doing karaoke, and then you got to go to the internet and vote for the person that you liked or disliked the most. And as it turns out, the, the deal is supposed to be that the, when you go to this website, because it's, the website is made by some big famous computer guy, mm-hmm. that you can only vote once. And then if you go back that the computer will realize it's your computer and it's your cookies, and the computer mm-hmm. won't let you vote more than one time. Right. Cookies. Well, <laughs> and now on, on Friday's episode, uh, we announced that, that our teams were up on WJFK.com for our fantasy football. Right. And Buzz said that he had been to the website, and the, the poll question was, who has the best team? Right. And Buzz was ahead, like 23%. So... Buzz sent an email to uh, Bart down at Clemson saying, uh, hey, Bart, because uh, Bart, on a, there's a separate web page that we have just for our fantasy football league. Right. And, and there's a, a little announcement message board there. And Bart wrote a message saying, right. I, I will have the greatest team in all of the land. Mm-hmm. So Buzz sent Bart an email saying, hey, Bart, you might think you have the greatest team in all the land, but according to WJFK.com, 23% of the people think that I have the best one. And he put the little smiley face after it. Right, so right. Buzz just busting his balls. Right. So about 8 o'clock on Friday night, phone rings. It's Bart. He says, hey, Dad, I got an email from Buzz. <laughs> I said, yeah. And he reads it to me, and I laugh. And I said, oh, come on. It, you know, <laughs> Buzz is getting into fantasy football. You know, Don't worry about it. it. Besides, everybody's team is... You know, I gave him the whole thing to everybody. It's his first week. Who knows? He said, no, go to the website right now. <laughs> and I said, hey, Barty, I'm all the way downstairs. He said, come on, go to the website right now. So I go up, I go up and I turn on WJFK.com, mm-hmm. and I click on the Don and Mike page, and right there, Bart has suddenly leaped ahead of Buzz. <laughs> and this is just an hour and a half after Buzz has mentioned this on the air. Right. Now, good. because I'm naive, I said to Bart, I said, you know what? It's probably the fact we talked about it on the air. A lot of listeners went to the to the to the website and voted for you. And he said, "No, nobody's voted for my team, Dad." <laughs> and I said, "Well, how do you know that?" He said, "Because I voted for myself." <laughs> and I said, "Well, now we went through this with the American Idiot contest. How did you do this?" And he said, "I have a program that resets my cookies." And they said, "Wow, that's, I'd like to get that." Well, Buzz has that. We we yeah. have that at our home Easily as well. Done. Yeah. Does that have anything to do with the Levitra discussion that we were having earlier? Yeah, no, there does can not. be some overlap. Getting your cookies yeah. reset. <laughs> so uh, now I'm on the phone with with Bart, and, he, and while I'm talking, how many times has he voted? I think he voted for himself something like 58 times. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and his plan was to just let this program run continually until he had 100 percent. And everybody else had zero percent. And I and I said to him, No, now knock that off. You know, <laughs> right? It's enough. You, you, you've gone ahead of, of buzz and popularity in, in this worthless, meaningless, right. you know, poll thing. But my point here is, again, we've seen that a website connected with WJFK <laughs> is easily is like hoodwinked. It's like a bank that's got an that's got a big sign out front saying. 
Today's the day they're dropping off $1 million in unmarked bills. The vault will be open. Come right in. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. And if only I had known this, Thursday night when we were at the Redskins-Jets game, right. the guy, Dave, the guy from the website, walked up to me and said, hey, hey Don, I'm Dave. And I, you know, Dave, I don't know, know you from a, high, from a hole in the wall. You, I'm Dave. He says, I'm, uh, I'm the website guy. I said, oh, how are you doing? He said, what do you think of the website? I said, WJFK, it looks good. Tight as Tupperware. <laughs> looks good. He said, we're going to put your fantasy stuff up there. I said, well, you know, great. You know, the whole time thinking, I'm not going to... I'm not going to mention the fact that when we, the one time we tried to do a contest on the internet, it was just <laughs> massacred. That we, that we had to cancel it because everybody figured out, like my kid, a way to get around. I mean, it's immediate. Now, is he, is your son just an average yeah. kid who, who just happens to be computer savvy, or is he they're a all, sophisticated hacker? No, they're all computer savvy. They're, Buzz is computer savvy. Mm -hmm. I, because my wife has shown me now, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm computer savvy because I know what keys to push to make things happen. See, I don't. Well, I'll I know how to click on the icon and get to the Internet. And there's a lot of people that know a hell of a lot more th than we do. So anyway. So, I mean, well, you're, so what I'm, my question was based on the fact that it, it wasn't anything very sophisticated. No. That, that got him to... Uh, no. No. Break in. in, a, in uh, to rob this bank, he rode his two-wheeler. Ah. Okay, he didn't mm -hmm. have to drive a car. He didn't have to put a mask on. He didn't have to go in with a gun. He didn't have to have a note for the teller. He, well, there the bank was wide open, and there were no security guards. Right, there. he just rode up on his bicycle to the bank, walked in, took the money out, and, and then left. Is it easy to fix this problem? I would think so. I would think so, but I'm not going to waste valuable time talking about it because it's, it's just a poll question. Right. And it's just Were the security guards uh, off eating a tuna fish sandwich? <laughs> you smell that too? Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, Rob, that is, that is some pungent fish. That is seriously rancid that tuna. Is, that is, that's, that's, that's not that, rancid. Tuna smells like that. No, but it's bordering on that bad... It smells know. like it's been in a can for a long time. <laughs> it, was, it was simply uncanned at about 1 o'clock. Really? In the fridge. Yeah. Uncanned. You check the date on it? I don't feel so good. <laughs> Is the room spinning? <laughs> I've got to get back to my lunch. <laughs> oh, and you know who's in the can right now? Ooh. Or maybe he's not in the can yet. Is uh, Warren Zevon. Oh, yeah. Oh, Warren Zevon. Eh? No, they're not going to bury him in a can. They're, they'll bury him in a box. You never uh, know. He's kind of an avant-garde guy. Maybe he wants right. to be buried in a can. So I, uh, I, I find out this information. And actually, Rob, when I thought about it, you weren't the, the first to tell me. Oh, okay. On Saturday, uh, my wife and I, well, I'll get into the weekend stuff now. My wife and I were out running errands. I'll tell you about that in a second. One of the errands we were running was uh, to go to the grocery store, blah, 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 Home Depot, blah, blah, blah. And I wanted to go to GNC to get some of my EAF shakes because it's one of the first seven days of the month when you can use the, the highly overrated Kiss My Ass gold card. <laughs> <laughs> now, I got immense satisfaction out of walking into the Reston, Virginia GNC, the one I have railed on time and time again over the last couple of years, mm -hmm. and is specifically old man Alzheimer who's behind the counter, <laughs> the guy who won't let it go. As soon as you walk in the door and you hear that beep that lets him know that you're there, even though he's all the way over at the counter, he starts right with the, I wouldn't be on that side of the store. How can I help you? <laughs> and I say, no need. I, I know exactly what I want. And as I walk by him and I go to where the, the shakes are, these protein shakes, he spots that it's me, right? And he, and he says, you're the radio fella. Uh -huh. And I said, yeah. Are you thinking right away fist fight? <laughs> well, I'm thinking there's going to be a confrontation. Mm -hmm. Because he says, you're the radio fella. And I said, yes, I am. And I put this, you know, they they, they don't just sell these shakes. They come in these little... In these little packages, but they, but they, but they pack it, they, they box them in these huge, gigantic friggin' boxes. Mm -hmm. Like, as big as Warren Zevon's casket is this thing that wow. I'm carrying up uh, to the counter. It's 42 protein shakes in it, and they're powder. Mm -hmm. You add, you add water and, and bananas and junk. That's a lot of fluid in there. So, but no, there, there is no fluid. Powder. It's all powder. So my my point is that the packaging sucks because you could get all 42 of these little powdered packages into a much smaller box, but for whatever reason, they put them in a jumbo deluxe box. So when you when you open it, there's just like a lot of air, a lot of empty cardboard? 
No, when, yeah, yes, when you open it, because there are 42 pouches that have the powder drink inside of them. So it's just ridiculous packaging. Poor use of space. Yeah. Bad packaging. So, right. I, so I plop this thing down on the counter, and because now he knows I'm the radio guy, and, mm -hmm. and I'm guessing that because he knows I'm the radio guy, he knows... You know, he knows that I'm the guy that said he's pushy and he's a dick. And, uh, and he says, I give him the gold card, and he says, only good for seven days of the month. And I check, and I go, huh? September 6th. Lay it on me. So he, he does the thing, and he says, would there be anything else? And I said, no, there wouldn't. <laughs> and, and as he's ringing me up, he's not saying anything. Then at the very end, he just he gave me the thing to sign with my credit card. And, he's, and, and he said, you heard about Warren, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, Warren Sapp? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I don't know who he's talking about. I go, no. He says, Warren Zevon yeah. passed away. They're keeping it quiet. I said, oh, that's too bad. He liked our products. <laughs> oh. Is that what he said? Yeah. He said he liked our products. And then... Well, I what, like he... I could, what, did he shop in that store? I couldn't help myself. I guess he had been somehow associated with... I, I, I couldn't help myself. I didn't know it was in poor taste. I said to the guy, well, they didn't help him a lot, did they? <laughs> what did they, he say to that? Nothing. Yeah. The guy <laughs> well, says, what do you... I mean, the guy just died and said he liked his products and you're selling nutritional supplements... Mm -hmm. I believe, and when I went back and analyzed the situation, I think the old guy, by acknowledging the fact that I'm the radio guy in the GNC in Reston, mm -hmm. he knows that I said I don't like the service there and that he's too pushy. <laughs> and I think... Do you think he knows that? Oh, I mean, are you 100% sure? Yeah, because, I mean, wouldn't he give he you more attitude? He didn't ask me if I need anything else. He, so you totally modified his rap. Yeah, it was. I went right to the part where, I, where the shakes are. I got my box, brought him up, he rang it up. The gold card. I think it was his way of making nice. Like, uh, uh, did you hear about Warren? Yeah. Right. Because I'm a radio guy, so I must know about Warren Zevon. Well, you're a fan. You know, he didn't know this, but you're you're a fan. Yeah, I'm a fan of Warren Zevon. I'm not a crazy fan, but I'm I'm a, I'm a fan of his. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> he was big, he was a big believer in our chain. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it was an awkward moment, and I just said. <laughs> Sure didn't help him a lot for that, did it? Wow. And the, no, no comment at all? The guy said nothing. <laughs> said nothing. And I said, all right, I'll see ya. And, uh, and, I, and I noticed uh, on the way out, I hadn't caught this on the way into the store. <laughs> Eyes boring into your head. On the way into the store, I had noticed he had a Warren Zevon CD on. Sure. Oh. He had with like a... It, and you know what it was? His tribute to Warren. It was probably he's probably like a you know Warren Zevon was probably his guy. I yeah. guess so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he probably probably you know as you turned around and walked out and chose not to look back, he was probably just giving you one of those real looks, you know, <laughs> yeah. like you'll be sorry, Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> Whatever. It was it was a little bit of revenge for me with the GNC. Yeah. Well, he yeah. caused you. I remember your last uh, discussion of that. He's caused you a great deal of angst. Tired of going in there and always, do you know what you want? Can I help you with anything? Do you know? That, do you think that's right? You know, you can get chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you come in on the first day, shut up! You don't need that. But, you know, I think it's nice that Warren waited to the first seven days of the month to pass away. <laughs> well, he's a big supporter of the chain. <laughs> and is Letterman live tonight? Yeah, so he'll be, be he'll yeah. be crying about it. Yeah, and he's a big, you know, buddy. They were yeah. one of his few friends, actually. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And he was uh, probably... The last appearance on network television was probably on Letterman's show. No, he had a VH1 special. He did. He did. That ran a couple of weeks ago. That Does VH1 that... count as a network? <laughs> no, because it's owned by <laughs> this company. Thank you. <laughs> no, you're right. It doesn't. So technically, count. I'm correct. Yeah. Uh, they had a thing following. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> following him around when he was sick. And uh, did you know that Letterman sang background vocals on a Warren Zevon album? Really excitable boy. I didn't, I didn't know that. I don't know which one it is, but if you go to my favorite, incidentally, if you're if you're counting Warren Zevon songs, that's my favorite. Excitable boy. It would be the only one I own. <laughs> excitable boy. It's a great song. And he rubs the pot roast all over his chest. <laughs> excitable boy. They all said. It's the best. It's the best song about like a serial killer yeah, that I've ever heard. Great lyrics. So then we're in uh, Best Buy. And I, I want to buy this uh, CD by Fountains of Wayne. Mm -hmm. It's a, a group that I that I dig. 
And I can't find it anywhere. I've looked under F. I've looked under W. I've even right. looked under O. So at one point... Was it right? I, I just want to tell you, though, to slow down. Stop leaving Stop leaving this jet set, jet set lifestyle that you're leading here. When you say, did you go right from the GMC to the Best Buy? Is that what it is? I did, Mike. I think of that, that, wow. that, that line in, uh, is it old school? That's where he said, well, we've got a pretty big weekend plan. <laughs> yeah. It's like crazy life now. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it gets crazier. But well, I'm telling you, it was nonstop from about 3 o'clock to about 8 o'clock. Welcome. It was, it was just crazy. Yeah. Wait, yo, man, look at this right here. You need to hit this. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I told my wife I wouldn't drink tonight. Besides, I got a big day tomorrow. But you guys have a great time. A big day. We're doing what? Well, um, actually, pretty nice little Saturday. We're uh, we're gonna go to Home Depot. Yeah, buy some wallpaper. Maybe get some flooring. Stuff like that. Maybe Bed Bath and Beyond. I don't know. I don't know if we'll have enough time. <laughs> okay, so. Yep, that's my life now. No kid. That's my life. Yep. Hold on, we're finding out about Warren Z. The, the, the album that Letterman was on now. I said, re- he's moving right along. Well, actually, re- actually, really on an album? Yeah, as a background singer. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Wouldn't uh, surprise me. Warren Z. Dead at 56. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this bio on uh, the Microsoft MSN. Mm-hmm. No mention of GNC. Huh. No mention of GNC. No figure. Scroll down. So on. somehow your guy at the GNC seemed really plugged into him. <laughs> Like they, they, they were some potty goers. He was a big supporter of the chain. Big supporter of the chain. <laughs> well, not on this. Not, on this not there? Okay. Talking. All right. Well, listen, don't worry about it, Rob. But it's important. But, but you're standing like one inch behind me. <laughs> Isn't it nice? Well, also, you know, and I don't want to, I wouldn't want to diminish your, your guy at the GNC and, and get into a fight with him. But it really, if you're, if you're doing the holistic approach to the big casino, which Warren, Warren Zevon had, you, you load up on the vitamins. You, you, you eat a tremendous amount of vitamins. On this VH1 show, they also showed it's drinking and, and smoking. Oh, sure. really? Right to the very end. Hey, man, if you're going to go, you're going to go. And That's I, what and, he said. And yeah. I think at one point he may have tried this health food thing. Okay, hold on. We found it. Hold on. Late show host. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Late show host David Letterman provided backing vocals on his song, Hit Somebody. <laughs> Warren Zevon's 2001 elegy to a professional hockey goon who longs to be a goal-scoring hero. <laughs> okay, that's good. I'd like to get that one. <laughs> so uh, we leave we leave the excitement of GNC to go to the excitement of Best Buy. <laughs> and I can't find this Fountain, Fountains of Wayne CD that I'm looking for. And I, and I like it. I've gone to F, I've gone to W, I've gone to L. Oh, I can't find it. So they've got a computer set up there mm-hmm. where you type in, you know, what you want and it tells you where it is. Well, as I found out, Apparently, if you're just a regular Joe customer, you're not allowed to touch the computer. You have to wait for the Best Buy guy to come over and tell him what you want, and then the Best Buy guy does it. So the the guy walks up, but I'm just typing in Fountains of Wayne. And I hit enter, and the guy comes up and goes, (laughs) swear to God, he goes, Dude, <laughs> you totally can't be on that computer, dude. <laughs> I, said, I said, whoa, I, listen, I, I'm sorry, I'm just looking for a CD. And he looks at the screen and he goes, oh, Fountains of Wayne. <laughs> yeah, we got it, Mom. I said, well, I looked under F and W. He said, oh, come here, Mom. And he brings me over to the corner and it's all the way down on the on the very bottom uh-huh. by Wayne, uh, Robbie, you remember this guy named some oldies guy, Wayne Fontana? Sure, and the mind bender. Wayne Fontana <laughs> and the mind bender. It's near the oldies section. But uh, he was really concerned you were using his computer. But then once he found out that uh, I wanted this, this Fountains of Wayne CD, mm-hmm. he said, that is an awesome CD. <laughs> Have you heard the song, I Want to F Susie's Mom? <laughs> and I said, <laughs> I said yeah, I've, I've heard it. It's yeah. a good song. It's really good. That's and then like he was walking back with me. That's a really good choice. And and then as as we parted company, I said, Well, thanks for your help, but dude. You just can't touch the computer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, Wayne. All right, best guy. Yeah. Right, Wayne Campbell. Uh, helping helping me out. We also. Oh, this is pathetic. My weekend is pathetic. Uh, we also. 
loaded up, up stuff uh, to Goodwill and, and, and drove to a, a Goodwill self-serve drop-off point. Well, it's nice. It's nice that uh, you do that, though. Uh, which, which involved us driving to some location where there was just a, a big semi-truck. Mm -hmm. It said, uh, you know, self-drop-off. And I said to Frida, well, even if what we're dropping off here to us is junk, mm -hmm. I'm just not going to put the stuff in the back of a truck and just leave it. Well, as it turns out, there was some slacker. Right. There, was, there was some guy that was there in his car just smoking coffee and, and, and drinking uh, or drinking cigarettes and smoking coffee. They turned oh, me away. Hold on. Smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee. They turned me away at Goodwill a couple of weekends ago when I was dropping off some stuff. Why? I had uh, I dropped off some beer that uh, was past the born on date. <laughs> and uh, I thought you could still drink it. No. <laughs> and he's, it, it wasn't that at all. So they didn't accept alcohol. But the stuff that we were that we were donating... Once the guy got out of his, his car, I couldn't help but mention, aren't you warm? It was like 85 degrees, and he had, uh, a, you know, like an M&M &M knit ski cap on, and he had long sleeve black uh, shirt and pants and all the, the chains and junk. I bet it smelled good in that trunk. And uh, well, no, he, was, he was in his car. Oh, his car. Stuff was in the trunk, and as we were unloading, once once again, it, it it just hit me that I'm in the wrong place because we pulled out a croquet set. Now, I don't know why we ever got a croquet set. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't ever remember playing it. <laughs> well, I know it'll mean a lot to people that are down on their luck, though. <laughs> in the history of my life. And this is, Mike, okay, this is exactly what I mentioned to my wife. Right. As we're getting these boxes out of the car. I kind of have, have to have a lawn for that. I, huh? I said to her, <laughs> what is Goodwill going to do with a croquet set? Well, here we go. We got something for you. We understand you're having trouble paying your rent and feeding your family, but how about a little croquet? <laughs> a croquet set, but we um, we gave them the, the croquet set. You could probably use the mallets. And as we were <laughs> as we were loading them into this truck, the guy turned to me and, and said, and I was blinded by the incredible outbreak of acne <laughs> oh. on his face. He said. It, 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 very similar to the Best Buy guy. It, what is that? And I said, that, my good man, is croquet. A fully functional croquet set. So he said, how do you play? And I said, I'll show you. <laughs> so I, I reach back in the truck and take it out. Now keep in mind, while this is going on, my wife is still loading and unloading the boxes <laughs> from our car. And I, and I say to the guy now... You've got these little metal gates, but we're here in a parking lot, so you can't, you know, you only just push them down on the ground. So here's what I want you to do. Just get down on one knee and hold that little gate with your left hand. And then I stood back there and I got, I said, now I got the red ball on the mound. Did you do the between your legs thing? No, I, I did it, you know, like a golf. Okay, all right. I said, now my goal is to get it between that little McDonald's arch that you're Through the wicket. Right. So I, I go... And it goes off to the right, and he goes, ha, you lose. <laughs> <laughs> he catches on quickly. And I said, yeah, yeah. And then he said, well, my turn. And I went, now I'm thinking that croquet set didn't make it to the people it was intended for. And I'm thinking, well, okay. So now I'm down on my knee. And at this point, my wife, who was still carrying the heavy boxes of the cars, she turns around, and she says, because now I'm in essence on the ground. Yeah, I I've been there to see that. She says, what are you doing? I said, I'm teaching my man how to play croquet. She said, we're here to drop the stuff off. And I said, hold on. I'm, I'm having, you know, I don't like doing these type of outings. I'm having a good time. So we get, I get down like I'm, like I'm uh, going to be holding for a field goal. Right. And I've got, I'm holding this. this Thinking he's going to maybe lay a real hard one at you. Probably, right. And, and he says, now how do I do this? I said, just do it like I did. Just just go back, like you hit a golf ball, tap it, and if you get it through, you win. The guy goes back, full extension, all the way back. No. Boom! <laughs> up off the ground, <laughs> gone. I mean, we were in a Safeway parking lot. Well, there it goes. There's the complete croquet set screwed up. So now we don't have the red ball for the croquet oh, set. No. Uh, what, well, you know what? And at that point, my wife came over. And but said, that family that needs one more thing to go wrong. My wife came over and said, stop it. Stop it. What are you doing? And I said, we're, we're playing croquet. Probably the high point of his month. And I mean, that kid got some loft on this ball. Right. I don't know if he's doing roids or what, but this thing was like, boom. 
off 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 a of concrete. He's probably doing some other drugs <laughs> over the over the wall. Maybe he's taking Buzz's uh, purple pill. Who knows? Anyway, over, over the Levitra, <laughs> over the wall, and and it ruined the day. At least that that part of the day for my wife. Because then we got moving, got done moving the stuff in, and this kid who I was ready to hate. When we got there, because I just said, "Oh, just another lazy, piece of ass, worthless, pimply kid." Uh, I thought, you know, hey, we had some fun. You bonded with him. And meanwhile, my wife had carried all the boxes <laughs> from my car, from my truck, out, out to this other truck. Is this uh, trip to Goodwill kind of a result of your uh, your son flying the coop? That your were there any other like games and stuff that you? I, I mean, not that you you know the last. Eight years of his life, he ever probably played croquet, but no, we never did. But yeah, my wife's cleaned out a lot of stuff in the uh, in the garage mm -hmm. and down in the basement, just junk that we'll we'll never use again. Right? You know, and one one of the things, and I did take issue with her on this, even worse than the croquet set, a paper shredder. Now I said, what is a what is a? Because I'm you know, I immediately go down to write to homeless. All right. What's a homeless guy going to do with a paper shredder? Yeah, I mean, if you're that family and uh, you know they just deliver stuff at random and you get the croquet set and the paper <laughs> shredder, I'm I'm pretty pissed off. Shredded paper makes how a great pillow. How about some boots? Anyway, well, no, Mike, no boots. No okay. boots at all. Any clothing? Yeah, there was some clothing. Okay, there there was some furniture. Clothing. Furniture, no. It was uh, paper shredder, co croquet, and and lots of clothing. Lots anything of anything like maybe a martini set or anything. You know, no. I'm just thinking for you know. If you're in that condition and you want stuff for free, however, if, if, quite, if you are homeless, <laughs> if you are homeless or, or, or down on your luck, you, you can be spotted now around town wearing a WJFK Redskins radio shirt. Oh, because I did donate about five of those. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so, that's a cool thing. Thanks. So proud to, <laughs> to good give But the paper, you know, I, I thought the croquet set was bad. I think the paper sh shredder really, really, you know. What are you going to do? I said to Frida, well, maybe, you know, because I questioned her, and she said, well, what, what else are we going to do with that? I didn't want to throw it away. I said, well, maybe they can <laughs> maybe they can take it apart and, and use the parts for something else. That's very good. It'll make the lettuce go a lot yeah. farther. <laughs> like Put what? food in it. Hold on. An impromptu food process. It's uh, 424. <laughs> uh, we're on 106.7 Washington. I see an experiment coming. 105.7 Baltimore. 95.9 9 Ocean City. Can you use a paper shredder with food? Don my gun on WJFK. WJFK. Did I not clearly explain the circle of trust to you, Greg? Okay. Yeah, I think I got it. Then is there something you want to tell me? I... I don't think so. See, if I can't trust you, Greg, then I have no choice but to put you right back outside the circle. And once you're out, you're out. There's no coming back. Mm. Well, I would definitely like to stay inside the circle. Well, then tell me the truth. Jack, I don't know what we're talking about. All right, now look, Father. I'm a patient man. That's what 19 months in a Vietnamese prison camp will do to you. But I will be watching you, studying your every move. And if I find that you are trying to corrupt my firstborn child, I will bring you down, baby. I will bring you down to Chinatown. WJFK. The Don and Mike Show. Listen up, you BM eaters. From Washington, D.C. on WJFK. From Baltimore on Live 105. And from Ocean City on 96 Rock. You can call Don and Mike toll free at 1 877 365 3636. They're ready to believe. Right, right. Uh oh. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. Filling your radio with their intoxicating aroma. Don Geronimo and Michael Mera. Yeah. This is ghetto delicious. And uh, for those of you listening to us at Ocean City, uh, you know, I love the way people's minds work. This is beautiful. Uh, Charlie just uh, came in during the break and said uh, that uh, the station in Ocean City, 96 Rock, uh, had some storms and the transmitter was hit by lightning. Oh, dear. So they're operating on reduced power. Mm -hmm. And some of our uh, listeners, some of our paranoid G. Gordon Liddy type <laughs> listeners, are convinced that the station is doing this to F with our show. No, no, no. No, no. no they're not. Now, other stations might, <laughs> but I don't think 96 Rock would be one of those stations. I don't think so. It's uh, 437 WJFK, Live 105.
96 Rock. Hello, Don and Mike. Yes, Joe. Um, no, I not, just not want... Joe. Sorry. <laughs> no. Joe. Hello. Other stations might. <laughs> now he's confused. Uh, what is the new thing where you, you, you have the dumb caller call, uh -huh. and then he turns up the radio and then hangs up? I don't, I, I don't get that. It, it seems to be happening a lot. I don't know. Hello, Don and Mike show. JFK, hello. Hi, Don. Hi, Mike. Hi there. Um, I would have something to tell you about taking clothes to the Salvation Army, but since you've gone past that, it's not relevant. But I did want to ask Mike one question. Yes, ma'am. Mike, when you go to the Redskins game with the, to hold a parabolic mic, yeah. can I come and like get hot dogs and beer for you? Can I be your runner? Oh, you only get one pass. Oh, darn. Oh, no. You, but, you know, if you could, like, get a ticket to be in the front row. Mike, I would love to be your runner. If I can get a ticket, can I do that for you? Really? What do you look like? Um, well, let's see. I'm about 5'7", 135, blonde hair, blue eyes. I tell you. We, we're never good at that. We're never good at that thing that we do. 5'7". Who's the celebrity you most resemble? I should ask five, the normal five, question. 5'7 is short. 135 is... Well, I'm not super thin, but I'm more muscular. Oh. I'm sort of athletic. Oh, okay, great. Well, uh, we'll put you on hold, and uh, Don will put you on hold. <laughs> and uh, you got we'll, something we'll in your eye? No, no, I just I had a little itch. And Don will put you on hold, and we'll uh, look forward to talking to okay. you. Okay, thanks. Hold on. Thanks a lot. She hung up. Oh, that oh, wasn't dear. me. That was her. Yeah, oh, I didn't do anything. She, she hung up. I couldn't have been more charming. Hello, Don and Mike, <laughs> uh, JFK. Hello. Hey, how you doing? This is Ron and Don and Mike. How are you today? We're doing very well, thank you. Hey, sirs, I have a question for you, and it's a uh, matter of military emergency. Yeah. Uh, we are, I got three guys here that made promotion in the Navy. We made chief, and it's a big uh, pinnacle in our career. Chief of but the boat. Get... Pardon me? Chief of the boat. No, Chief Petty Officer of the, night of the Navy. We're E-7. And uh, we need to get a picture. You know, I was just doing a thing like they do on the boat where they say chief of the boat. It's a high rate. You're like a sergeant, right? That's right. Yeah, That's okay. Right, duh. Moron. <laughs> anyway. Chief. But uh, we, we need to get a picture taken with you guys for our scavenger. How about a picture? Would you like to get a picture taken, Cabby? Sorry about that, Chief. You get, Yeah, come down to the station any time before the show. We'd be glad to. Uh, great. I really appreciate it. All right, bye-bye. Photograph. You know, I'm watching uh, Crimson Tide, which is all over cable, and I've watched it like ten times. It's one of my favorite movies, and that's what they say. They always say... Chief of the boat. Mm -hmm. Chief of the boat's the big fat guy. Right. That's with Gene Hackman. Right. You know? Hello, Don and Mike show. JFK. Hey, Hello. Doing? I'm headed down to the shore. Where am I going to watch the game at? Uh, come again? <laughs> Where's a good place to watch the game in Ocean City? My ass. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. I'm sorry. We've just had too many. Yeah, it's been too, a wave of them. Too many. Too many. In, in, hey, Don, where you watch the game at? In, in a row here. Yeah. <laughs> Too many in a row. Um, okay, the, the weekend. Here's now, for me, the highlight of the weekend, which to some of you will sound rather cruel. But I found it both touching, yet laugh out loud, funny, humorous. Very good. That I, I told you last week about him. I, I had gone through it. I'm still going through this, this thing with, with missing my son down at college. Sure. Um, but I'm doing much better because spending time with my wife, oh, we have so totally run out of things <laughs> to talk about now that we are childless and because our lives revolved around him. And, and she just, my wife also, Frida won't let me just sit down at dinner. We went out to dinner after we did all this other stuff Saturday. And she, she said one of the topics was you can't just bitch about how much you hate Westwood One. Ah. You, uh, we're going to have a, a truce on this at dinner that we can't talk about how poorly things are going in the radio business. All right. Did you, did you say fair enough with that one? Yes, I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, All right. and we sat down to eat. We sat outside, a place mm -hmm. in Reston Town Center, mm -hmm. seafood place. And here's how we knew we were running out of stuff to talk about. And we were going to have to involve other people in our socializing. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the thing is, when you've got a kid... That your life revolves around your kid and then the people who have kids. Now, hey, what are you guys doing with the telephone? Did you see that? They, they do this thing where they just they busy up all the lines. All Why the... are they doing that? I don't know. Hmm. 
I don't know. I, I wouldn't mind taking some phone calls. Just just let them ring. I, I'll see. I'll see what I'll do with them here. Very just, good. Just let them ring through. I'm sorry. ADD. Sorry. I yeah. see it. Well, no, not exactly. Flashing you kind of have to be aware of what's going on over there, and when they do that, it distracts you. I see all of the lines go blank, mm -hmm. and I know that somebody in the back room has lost their patience and just put all the calls on hold. Oh, could, could, I'm curious. Do you think it's because Joe's having a bad day yeah. with the callers? I mean, based on the calls that have gotten through. Watch. Monday. I'll do it. Right. I got the same button. I'll do it. Look at your phones. Okay. Ready? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Now I can see where that would catch your eye. Because I just, I just can't. All of a sudden, it's like you're you're at the Las Vegas Strip. Right. No. And now Joe just did it again. Don't do it, Joe. <laughs> Let him just ring. I'm just curious if Joe is having one of his days. You know that. Uh, I would say Charlie is Joe having a day back there with the callers. He may be, but I did that. Oh, you did that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There were none did you do it originally? Yeah. What? Well, why? There were none of the accepted area codes. Oh. Okay. Well. Oh. Okay. Would, That's why. Well, a little secrets out of the bag now. <laughs> God, Charlie, play along. <laughs> You're killing me. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. I'm having a great day. Okay, I'm glad to hear it. I just thought, you know, I thought because of the, some of the callers we got that maybe, you know, you'd gotten so many that you just hit that button off. No, no, callers are, are okay today. Okay. okay. Every day every day without a call from Sacramento is a day of sunshine. Oh, dear. Joe. All right, thank you. Well, that's fine. <laughs> and, uh, Charlie, thanks for keeping those... Uh, those plots super double secret for us. So the good day would match Joe's good hair day. <laughs> <laughs> Joe has not washed his hair since last week, I believe. What the hell is that today? Very, very stringy. <laughs> well, now I feel the need to address what Charlie said. That no, no, I don't know. No. Absolutely not necessary. No one, oh. no one will even... That's gone. Okay. That's gone. Forgot. All right. Gotcha. You have gone. Okay. So... Where's Unless you really feel like it's necessary. <laughs> you know what? I'm sorry. I shouldn't do this on the air. Cause you know what you like? You're like an animal house. You're like the guy on, on the shoulder going, do it, do it, do it. Effort, no, effort. I, I'm... And then the other guy going, don't do it, don't do it. You know, the, the, this company... It wouldn't be bad to talk about it, but yet I also think it would be very, very non-interesting for, for the average listener. You know what I mean? I think almost, and, and that, and then it does fall into the category of too inside. I think we're doing what we're doing, and we just should. We're trying to do the show without penalizing the people who are listening to it in the cities where we don't have a deal. Right. That, that's all we're trying to do is right. just give you a show. For instance, Rob mentioned, or Joe mentioned, Sacramento. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Mike. Let's go a few more miles on the high road here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Very good. In Sacramento. Here's our game plan. Mm -hmm. Until the dickheads at, at this company figure out what they're going to do with us, mm -hmm. we're fine. They're going to run the show on KHTK. Don't get me wrong. We appreciate the support. We appreciate our listenerships mm. in all of these cities. But there's so much more to it than that that would be boring to you and would be uh, make us seem too self-important. The only way to deal with it is we're doing the show right now for 106.7, 105.7. 95.9. Everybody else in the other cities, hopefully we're doing enough stuff that you'll be able to listen, and you won't even really be able to tell the difference. Mm -hmm. But with no offense to the other cities, yeah, the, the, the guys in the back room have, have been instructed. Yeah, we're, we're doing a party for, uh, for three stations right now. Right. right. And that's kind and of we are doing that until we figure out what's going on mm -hmm. or somebody indicates to us that, that anything has changed. Mm -hmm. Right. Because oh. we said we'd do it, and that's why we're doing it. Let's see if anything's changed. Bing is weird. Why not? We're really... We're taking the ladder down from the high road right now. Let's just see if anything's changed. Alan, what? Alan. Alan. Hello, Alan. Don and Mike. Hey, guys. La, la, la. La, 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 la. La, la, la. You know, we're still on that high road. Stay on it. We're still on that high road. Keep it up. It's a, it's a nice vantage point. You know, I, and one of the things I wanted to pass along, Alan, is that road is... It's got a couple of potholes in it right now, and, and I envision that road getting a little bumpier as time passes. So we're just, you know, passing that along that it's it's hard. Well, I'm trying to pave it along the way, guys. Very good. I know, I know you are, but, but let me ask, without getting very specific, did the, guy, did the guy, what's his name, Shane? Is that the guy's name? Did that guy ever get on the phone today? We, we had everybody that we told you was going to be on the call on the call. So is it resolved? Do we have a? Do we have a? I don't want to say deal because, gosh, 
we had a deal with you guys back on December 6th, which you've just bothered to, to wad up and throw out the window. But do we have a deal? You and I always, yeah, we have a deal. Are you saying, is there a new deal? Oh, don't play that no, game. You know, see, now, people are not going to understand this, Alan. You know, that's why... Yeah, the, you know what, that, that's this why... High road, this right. high road doesn't work. This high road does not work. Yeah, stick to it. I'm more, I'm more comfortable on the low road. I know you are, but now, stick, stick you to the high road. You, em you emailed me uh, one week ago on, on Labor Day and said, give me a couple of days. And then you said to Mike... Give me until the end of the week. No, no, no. No, you didn't say give me the end of the week. You no, said no. by the end of, by Friday we uh, we have something that would get our attention. That was the quote. No, no, no. What do you mean, wait a minute. Now hold on. I am quoting you there. Well, no, it's not what I say. It's what you hear. I understand that. But you said to me that that probably by Friday there would be something that would get our attention. No, I didn't say probably by Friday. I said my hope was that we could. Okay, have, all, right, all right. My hope was that we could have this call no later than Friday. All right. So, so well, just, we didn't have it Friday. We had it today. You know? So, so you've had the, so you've had the call today mm -hmm. with all of the muckety mucks. What's wh what's the uh, what's the prognosis for the patient? Well, the patient is is deathly sick. No, I'm kidding. No, hey, Alan, no. just be straight with us and, and, uh, and everybody I, who's listening. I continue to be hopeful. That's why I want you to stay on the high road. Uh, you know what? This yeah. is like no, 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 no. Long life support. Listen, I know you don't want to take my calls after. Uh... No, I, no, I don't because what would you have said to me on Friday night? I was just going to tell you that the uh, the call was on for 2 o'clock today. Yeah, and, and that would have just pissed me off all weekend thinking. How did the call go? Yeah, because it's now 10 till 5. How'd the call go? Fine. It was good. But, you know, you know I what? guess... Never, I guess never, mind. You wanna... never mind. I'm going to... Re... We're taking another step down. Bye-bye. Nah. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, our listeners do deserve the truth. I'm going to call... The offices of Ephraim and Associates. If you know your... One moment, please. Yeah, we'll let people know how it's going. Now we'll get a real assessment. Call one of our retarded agents. Maybe. Elliot, it's Don and Mike. Hi, Elliot. You boy, you don't get on the air with us very often, do you? <laughs> it's been a couple uh, years. Elliot, what, listen. What do I owe the pleasure? Here's what here's what you owe the pleasure to. We were on the air trying to maintain the high road. One of my uh, goons came in and and said something about you know well we're not taking calls from the other markets and left us in a in a kind of a wide open position. Yeah, it kind of brought up what we were doing here. And and Alan came in. You know, I called Alan up and Alan said, well, there was a conference call today, and we said, well, how did that go? And he said he's hopeful. Now, we've not said anything specifically on the air, except that these people we work for are just jerk faces and. We'd like to know this con this conference call that you had today with apparently first off was everybody on this conference call that was supposed to be on this conference call? Uh, I I think so, yeah. Okay. And everybody that mattered. <laughs> Depends how you define it. Yeah, I think I think everybody was on it. That, that... All right, Ben. What is your immediate prognosis? G give me a, a and remember you are on the air. An overview right now. Just was it positive, was it negative, or was it more of the same? Uh, I would say it was neutral, and we'll wait in here and see what they have to say. Mm -hmm. That's a little cryptic. Yeah. You but then again, you can't. <laughs> I guess he's aware that he is. I'm not the radio guy. You have to be more specific with us, though, and with our listeners. Wait how long? How long? Yeah, thanks, Buzz. How long? How long are we waiting now? I mean, being uh, we're, we... we're actually supposed to hear something this week. We're supposed to hear something this week by when? Would that uh, be by Friday? They, what did they say on that? See, I folks, we're, I swear we're not dicking you around with this stuff. This is real. Um, I don't remember if they specified a day, but I think it's, it's this week that we're supposed so, to hear. So what happens, theoretically, because I love asking these questions, what happens if Friday comes, as I'm sure it will, and nothing happens? I don't imagine you guys are going to be too happy. That is very true. Okay. So would you say that we should continue to take the high road? Is it worth our time? Or at what point do we just say, yeah, have it? I think take, take the high road for a few more days here. Let's see what develops. 
What's your cutoff day on the high road? Thursday? <laughs> don't don't say Friday. I mean, let's put some pressure on these effers. Let's, let's put some pressure on them right now. They're, you know, God knows that they never listen to the show, but today might be one of the few times they're listening. <laughs> Elliot, come on. Be a man of conviction. If not by Thursday, what happens? We, we go nuts. We take the subway. <laughs> we go down into the abyss. I'm, I'm going to leave that to you guys. We wallow in the primordial ooze. So it's Thursday, and how about Thursday by showtime? Thursday at 3 o'clock. Let's see what happens. Elliot, they signed a, they signed a thing on December 6th of last year. I know it. I know it. Let, let's count. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. That's nine months ago. They signed a thing that... You can make a baby in that time. They're not living up to that. <laughs> they're not living up to their deal. They're really just... We've rats. told them that. We, they're, we've they're made just, them clear. They're just stinking rats. They're really just a rat. They're... Hey, that sounded like low road talk. I'm, I didn't call them rats. Sounded like low road talk. I didn't call them rat bastards. Oh, no, that's a low road comment. I just said they're rats. <laughs> right. They're rats and they're and they're slimy and I don't I don't trust them. And I you know I just I just want to be happy and just do the radio show. If it's on one station, on three stations, on forty stations, we just want somebody to tell us what the f is going on. In a word, and I'll make it easy for you. In a word, how would you characterize the discussion today? How would I characterize the discussion? It's always a very tough question to ask anybody that is involved with the law. Well, yeah, you know, we we don't express in one word. I know you don't. That's right, why I ask. We can't question. bill on one word. Right? Come on, all right. Well, <laughs> you're off the clock now. So, in one word, how how would you describe your conversation? I'm, I'm today? never off the clock. <laughs> Okay, how would you describe your conversation? And positive, today? negative, and neutral oh, is, I, are not allowed. They're not allowed. Those words are not. Positive, negative, and, and, and neutral are not words that, that are accepted. Or I'd say at least neutral is not acceptable. Right. I would take positive or negative and then push on from there. Okay, positive or negative today? I, I would say positive, but I would say guarded. I uh, couldn't do it. Uh, no. Like you guys, I could have told you. <laughs> that is, that's negative. Like you guys, I'll believe it when no. I see it. Ah. Okay. Oh, okay. Now wait. Now, now let me let me just elaborate a little bit here. Would that be positive, but based on your previous discussions and your experiences with these people, that's why you're guarded? I'm an optimist. There wasn't anything concrete that developed today. I'm hopeful we'll get something this week that'll make us happy. Okay. Very See, good. here's what I read into that. Same old, same old. <laughs> you know, what I just heard him say, and this is how I listen to our agent, what I just heard him say was today, and now they built this up, today was the, supposed to be the big conference call. He got nothing. Yeah. They came through with nothing. There was nothing decided, but you're optimistic. Today was a chance for them to hear where we were coming from, and they heard where we were coming from. Okay. So now uh, they've got a chance to... And that was the first real substantive discussion that they had? Uh, uh, with these people. Okay. With this batch. Our they, first discussion with these people. These they, people. They, these people. They are... These people. They are slower than Warren Zevon. They really are. Uh, you know, Warren Zevon is... Hey, way. come on. Where are you driving? you taking that exit? You sound like you're starting to take that exit. <laughs> oh, down you won't take that exit yet. Look at that road. It's all the way up high. Hey, Elliot. <laughs> How are you? Yes. Do you know that Buzz is addicted to... <laughs> What's that pill, Buzz? Levitra. 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 Yeah. Is that the new one? Yeah, that's yeah. the new one. <laughs> I, I the new can't, one. I can't yes, stop taking it. Everybody's talking about <laughs> it. It is. All right, Elliot. Well, thanks for coming on the air with us. Okay, sure. Have, have a good show. Give our best to Joe. Will do. All right. Hey, well, now, now that you're here, anything you want to say to any of the jerk faces that, that you have to deal with? Yes, anything you'd like to say publicly? Uh, you know, with this. Haven't I been? Haven't I, how about? Well, I mean, I mean, anything you? You know, we, we've been kind of grilling you, and now it's kind of your open forum here. Oh, I'm gonna leave it at that. How about to? How about to our listeners? What would you say to our listeners? Because, Very good. Because our listeners, I'm sure, want us to say something on this topic. It's 4.56 on WJFK and Live 105 and 95.9 Ocean City. There's something they'd like us to say, but we, because we're taking the high road, what would you say to our listeners about this? And don't say be patient for a couple of days, because they're madder than we are. I, I was going to say demand Don and Mike. Demand Don and Mike. To who? To, to their stations.
to their stations, to their local stations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks, Elliot. Okay. You take care now. There he goes. E squared. Elliot Ephraim. Right there. Bye, bye, Elliot. Right there. Right there. there. Hey, is any mama? There he goes. Elliot Ephraim. Our agent. Elliot Ephraim. Who says that we don't give you behind the scenes? (laughs) That was beautiful. You don't get more behind the scenes than that. And that's really. Not far away from from a regular from what we and especially with the my read on what went on today that's really not far away at all from the dis- discussion that we'd have and my read on that is if, if we hung up the phone and I, and I called Mike back as we always do on a conference call I'd say we're effed yep today was the day that they've built up for the last goddamn month and a half as being you know the one day when all the planets align and all of these super important jerk faces can finally get five minutes together for a conference. But we also have to point out, and this is for our listeners as well, that it is, you know, our standard operating procedure is, uh, you know, we are ETW guys. Always have been. Hey, we are what, guys? Expect the worst. Well, that's it, because you know what that is? It's another E. Experience. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Okay. We'll see what happens. We call the now Alan. no longer acting general manager, Alan. Alan, we just spoke to our agent on the air. Uh, you know, I caught the tail end of it. I thought, oh, that, I thought that voice sounded familiar. Great, <laughs> great news that you'll hear from us. Yes. Our new deadline is Thursday at 3 o'clock. <laughs> no, really. Thursday at 3 o'clock. Okay, yeah, I hear you. It, 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 hey, guys. Yeah. Now, what what I heard him say was he thought it was... Did I hear him say he thought it was positive? He said it was positive, but he was guarded. Well, of course, he's always guarded. He's your agent. No, I, but I, 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 thought I, it was, read it, I read it totally differently. I read it that he was disappointed. What did you read between the lines, Here's, Scott? And I'm not kidding. This is the way I hear it. You guys build up this meeting. You guys came with nothing today in this meeting. There was nothing substantive, substantive in this meeting at all. Right. I... I I don't agree with that. Let's just leave it at that. I think the people who needed to be on this call were on the call, and uh, keep, and keep they... on that road. Keep, that, keep on that high road. <laughs> All right, well, uh, just so you know, the high road officially gets blown up Thursday at 2.59 p.m. Listen, I've never steered you guys in the wrong direction, have I? Um. <laughs> well, I'm, and, and I would like to think I've not steered you, and, and Mike has not steered you in the wrong direction either. Absolutely. But I'm telling you right now, we're coming to the cliff. Thursday, two fifty nine. And I should point out, Alan, that low road can be highly entertaining. Uh, not for me, but I'm sure for you. <laughs> well, you wouldn't be involved in it. No, not at all. But, you know, it's, yeah, I may not be involved, but it's, you know, look what the dog drug in. Yeah, see, here's, here's, and now, and now we've crystallized what Alan's real involvement in this is. <laughs> not that he wants us to, to do well, or that he necessarily wants the company to do well. He just wants to make sure his hands are clean. Right. There he you just, go. He just wants to make sure. <laughs> there you go. He, he, he's like I don't you. know. Yeah. Like I don't know. Right. If you had a vested interest in this, my God, if I talked about this at any length about what's really happening, you would have jumped up on your desk, pulled down your pants, <laughs> taken a dump three months ago, and said, get him out of this god-awful deal. Yeah, see, I don't care that much. You're right. <laughs> no, you do, but you do care, but you care more about kissing ass. See, that taking the dump on the dump, and that right there, that's low road talk. I like that. No, you like kissing ass. <laughs> oh, Scott, you're so smart. Hey, hey, Thursday. Okay, sorry. Come on. Don't use your best stuff now. Come on now. You've already said kiss ass. You've said dump on the desk. This is quality low road material. Okay. Here. Don't well, don't leave it all on just, the table. Uh, just hang in there, guys. That's it. It's muscleless and Thursday. That's right. <laughs> really? An incidentally perfect day to pick for the uh for the low road. Yeah. But Alan, no kidding. Really no kidding. Thursday's it. I, I mean, I swear on my kid's life. I don't do that. Why? Don't, cause just don't do that. Why? Why? Oh, because, because why? Because Thursday will come and nothing will happen. Or if I say Friday, you'll say don't don't do that because you know this is the point with these guys. This is the whole thing. Can anybody in this goddamn company make a decision about anything? All we've asked is very simple. 
You want us or you don't want us. How tough is that? It's not tough. No, it's not. So Thursday, it'll be done or it won't be done. And don't call me tonight, and I'm not doing this as a joke. Don't call me until you got an answer. And so you got the balls to call New York and say, okay, I'm the general manager now. I need an answer. I, don't, I wasn't playing. Because my prima donna of tight a-hole disc jockey is giving me a hard time. Because I know that's what you say about me. And I don't care. I really don't care. I don't call you prima donna. You call me other things. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and me, you. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh. <laughs> not at you. Oh, uh, boy. You're the enemy. Yeah. Oh, oh where boy. am I the you, enemy? You know, all this, you know what? This is all the enemy. Wait, wait. This is the same thing always with this company. It's always, ah, uh, you know what? Those guys will take S and turn it into chicken salad. Guys. Ah, uh, you know what? Just put them on the air. Don't give them a deal for their affiliates. Don't steal money from them. Take money from them. Give them bad accounting. Put them on crappy radio stations. Don't do anything to to move their careers ahead. And then when they come to you and say, let's just be honest and be businessmen about this, and let's just walk away from it, then you go, oh, no. It's very important to us. Yeah, that's it. Hey, very, hey, news flash, guys. It's very important I'm, to us. I'm on your side. You guys are very important to the company. Well, I think what Don is doing right now is kind of capsulizing uh, well, exactly what we've been dealing with. I think that... For those of you that listen to that type of thing and really hang on every word, what you just heard was in, I think, 15 seconds or less, everything that we're concerned about, mm -hmm. which is, I think, fair to everybody that's listening to this show right now. Mm -hmm. So there you go. And I, I'm glad you said that. And that's why we're... And I don't think you did the low road. I think you were just telling it the way it was. And that's that's good. And you guys stink. <laughs> that's you that's that. stink now, on That's eyes. low road talk. I don't care. You stink well, on now, eyes. Hey, how fun? How can we look forward to the low road if you're going to use it all now? <laughs> oh, I'm I'm still on a, an expressway. <laughs> I'm not down. You're on a road. you're on a monorail. And furthermore, <laughs> I don't have you riding a shotgun yet. He, oh no, you don't. No, I don't. <laughs> you know, I'm just sort of chomping. And look at I don't have the boy in the back seat either. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now I'm yeah, just out there doing. I'm, I, you know, I'm like at a Thursday. The boy in the back seat is going to get writer's cramp. I'm like at a, at a NASCAR track, just doing time trials right now. Right. I'm not, I'm not out there ru running with my crew. Jesus, Alan, you're disgusting. This whole company's disgusting. I swear to God, you guys treat us good at WJFK. We'll, okay. give, we'll give you that. Absolutely. And, and uh, just so our listeners know, that's been our whole point all along here. We you, said things are good at WJFK. All the other and, stuff boggles, kind of boggles the mind. So why don't we just, being as you have a company, Westwood One, which is just a write-off for Infinity, so nobody cares if our show makes any money for our affiliates or for us, and being as there's never been a push on to market our show, to make our show get into any big markets, we can deal with that. We can deal with the fact that, we, we sure that can. we're going to be in our hometown and we're happy with that. So what we've come to you is said, either make it right or blow the thing up. That's it. And I'll tell you what, affiliates listening down the line, nobody in this company has had the balls to tell any of you this. And they should have told you this a month ago. They should have told you this two months ago. They should have told you this three months ago. There's a very good chance that this show will not be syndicated in the future. And I'm not saying that as a threat. I'm not saying that as an egotist. I'm saying that as somebody who just had it up to here. If, if our, the loyalty of our listeners was enough to offset the way we're treated by the jerk-offs that run this company, it would be an even trade. It would be an even trade if you could say, well... When, you know, we're number two, 12 plus in Sacramento. We got the greatest, most loyal listeners in the world out there. Which we do. But that's not enough. Because it's been going on for a long time. It's not the first time we've made noise about it. Mm -hmm. and, and we're not even talking about making money for ourselves or making money for our radio stations. We're talking about when Mike and I are driving to the Redskins game last week. And Mike says, oh, look, I've never seen that. That's a big bus board for Bill O'Reilly. No S. Where'd that come from? I said, oh, you didn't know? Westwood One paid for that. That's the kind of crap that we've dealt with. Westwood One won't put a dime into our show. They put us on stations that have no chance of succeeding. And then in the, in the, in the rare occasions that we do get a following, it's dismissed. 
And you know what he does? What he did the other day? He calls me in to show me that Westwood One believes in us. He pulls out some goddamn pamphlet. And our picture is on the back cover. <laughs> I said, wow. <laughs> They're really behind you at Westwood One. I was actually not on the back cover, but uh, yes, close. It's, yeah, very Well, whatever. Whatever page we were on towards the back. And it was like something, you know, real guy talk with real guys. Please kiss my ass with this stuff. Just either either do it right or stop doing it. How simple is that? Now, I've said that to everybody listening. Our agent might not have the balls to say that. You guys don't have the balls to say it. I'm just telling everybody, just either fix it or make it go away. This is no power play on our part. It really isn't. We power play is when you say, hey, you know, do this or else, and we're not. We're just saying from a strictly a business standpoint, if you're not going to do it right, don't do it. Because you know what? We can do our job better here, and we won't have the distraction of working for a network that is not which is why doing what we want them to do. Which is why I've had to instruct Charlie, which started this whole thing, not to uh, take phone calls from other markets. Because, for instance, from Sacramento, all the phone calls we're getting are, are from people saying, how come you're saying WJFK and Live 105 and 96 Rock, and you're not saying KHTK? Mm -hmm. and, and the reason is, that's the only way we can get your attention. And hopefully we have, but... You know, we can be hopeful, but, man, it's just been a long time. Well, ju just be hopeful. You've gotten the attention of everybody who needs to uh, be involved in this, right? You know, and I will tell you, Alan, and I mean this sincerely, here in Washington and the way things have gone here with you and everybody else, everything's fine. We are very ha happy with that. But I'll tell you, the other stuff is it's just, to us, it's the last part of the equation. And we wish to God, one way or the other, it would get fixed. And I know there are some people out there who will be listening in another city saying, boy, you guys are, you know, ungrateful for your great listenership. You reward your listeners. And once again, you know, the listeners get screwed. No, listen, it has nothing to do with being point, yeah. grateful to the listeners. It has everything to do with people taking advantage of the goodwill between our listeners in this show. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And the only answer that we can come up with is... We're happy just doing a local show. It's like when you're sitting there and you got a really nice sandwich and this person's not eating their sandwich. You said, you going to eat that? Oh, no. No, I'm not going to eat it. Oh, can I have it? No. No, I want to keep that sandwich because it's a good-looking sandwich. I'm not hungry at all. I'll probably never eat it. But I'm going to throw it in the trash rather than give it to you. Right. Sorry. So for our listeners... So that wasn't low road. For our listeners in the other cities, we say we're sorry that this is happening. And we've tried not to make this into a goddamn soap opera. But the truth is, it's just, it's ridiculous, Alan. Either syndicate us, and incidentally, hello, McFly, we're not asking for a Brinks truck to pull up with money. You know, one of the, one of the things we're asking for, for at least the last five years, an audit, some accounting. <laughs> because there's money flying out that we're not seeing. And anybody else that was in our position, in a business position, would say, how can you have one radio station that's paying you an ungodly amount of money for which we're very grateful, and you have 40 other stations that are not paying anything for it? And are making money off it, but not even making the kind of money they should make off it. It's the worst business deal in history. The worst deal in history. And it might be a little bit better if this company got behind us, like like they do with uh, someone they they believe in, like O'Reilly, and put some uh, billboards up or did something like that. Has this company ever done anything for us besides pay us well to work at WJFK? No. So anybody that's listened to all this, that's where we're at. And if you've been confused as to what the situation is, we we unconfused you. That's it. We're fine with being a local show. And, Alan, I believe we did that and stayed on the high road. We're fine with being a local show. We don't mean any offense to anybody listening around the country. We're very sorry that you're caught in the middle of this. But if we continue with this type of working environment with these jerk faces... It's going to be five more years of us coming in and screaming all the time about how we hate our because relationship. Nothing would change, and sometimes you've got to force change mm -hmm. to make things better. And I hope to God that happens one way or the other. Well, it has to happen one way or the other. 
Thursday at 2.59. Very good. Anything else, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else for me, though? Mm -hmm. I, I, no, no. Why should he offer up anything? Why should he offer up at this point anything to say, you're wrong about this or you're wrong about that? Or, well, or, he, he agrees with us, I think. Or say anything optimistically. Yeah, and how about all the off-the-record stuff we get? Mm -hmm. Oh, well. All right, that's for the low road. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But let me just say, it's very frustrating when you're talking with someone. They say, oh, someone high up in this company. And they say, well, off the record, we totally agree with you. <laughs> oh, wait, what? Off the record, all the executives agree with us, but on the record? <laughs> Please. It's kind of nuts, isn't it? I mean, we really hear this. I swear to God we hear this. Either they're, they're J-O-ing us. Or they do think that they agree with us. It kind of makes you crazy. You kind of feel like a hamster in a wheel. Sure. So there you go. That's the entire nut. That's it. We either want to be a local show or we want to be a syndicated show that's treated on the level of, let's say, the Laura Ingram show. Bingo. And I think I've picked someone who's low enough on the totem pole. To understand, I'm not saying make as, as big as Howard Stern. That's not going to happen. I'm not saying put us in the IMUS class. Mm -hmm. I'm shooting low. Laura Ingram. Jesus, we're not better than that bitch. <laughs> and if we're not, and if this company thinks we're not, then let us do our show on WJFK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can grow again because we can do our own thing and, and do it better. Slow but surely. Mike Harvey, solid gold Saturday nighter. Dick no, no, no. Partly, whatever. No, you, you were right with the. I, I like the first one you mentioned. Laura Ingram. Yeah, very good. Any of you radio files out there can can study this. She left Westwood One to go to some other jerk face radio network, <laughs> but at least they got her on in a bunch of big markets. She's making some coin. She's happy. She thinks they're behind her. They're probably not, but she thinks they are. That's <laughs> important. But the, here's the thing. We know these guys aren't behind us. We know it. We know what we're, we're important on WJFK. And they don't want the embarrassment of losing this show. The network, they don't really like us. And, and Alan, if I hear one more time, no, we, will, we lost Opie and Anthony, and we really didn't, you know, you're like the only show left like that. Please, we were here before them. We're going to be here after them. Just fix this, please. Do you know how frustrated we are? Yes, I do. I think that's a better explanation of the frustration than we've even given behind closed doors, frankly. Hope you were paying attention to all that, Alan. I every we're hanging on every word, and because that's from the that's from the heart. Either I... do it right, like you would treat a third rate nationally syndicated and i'm using the dr evil quotation because i know we're not nationally syndicated i'm fine with that either treat us like you would treat a third-rate laura ingram or we want to just do a local show and by contract signed by this company on december 6th you guys were supposed to start looking into that and you've done nothing as a company you've done nothing in 10 months to address the situation And obviously, as you can hear, I'm totally wrong since he's telling me I'm totally wrong. <laughs> what did you expect? What did you expect? You think you're just going to keep playing this game with us over and over? It'd be, guys, give me a couple more days. Alan, I know you're working as hard as you can, but, you know, it's above your head. Well, uh, I continue to be hopeful, and I think you heard that in your agent's voice, so <laughs> just... Just hang tight, guys. Well, you know, and really, I think, I hope we've we've gotten one message across. And I think that if we got anything across from this discussion right now is we really do just want to have an answer one way or the other. You know, if it's going to be uh, something where they come up with something, fine. If it's going to be, screw you, fine. Just give us something. And by Thursday, and, and if nothing else, then how about the radio stations that run this show? Because you know what? By Thursday, even an answer with, with whatever. We could come on on Thursday and say to the stations, we're going to be on this network for two more weeks oh, or, or one, more, one more month. You know that won't happen. I'm, 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 I'm hoping that, that this will result in something. It will. 
All right. It will. Okay. Because once again, we've had to act like jerk faces because when we try to do things the right way behind the scenes with you guys, all you do is just dick no, around. Something will happen here. Just, you know. Something will happen. Something I wouldn't will even... happen. Something will happen. Make it happen now. <laughs> is anybody in this company besides you listening to the show today? These multitudes of lawyers that you have sending letters and these guys with kidney stones who are on, on conference calls and other guys who are wearing slicky hair and yellow ties. Do any of these guys ever listen to this show? Do they have any idea what we're about? And trust me, I won't be crushed if you say no, but I would appreciate one effing time the truth. Just one effing time. I, I would have to tell you, I don't think these guys are listening, no. Okay. So what we've said doesn't matter. Well, because sure it does. if it gets back, it'll get back third hand, out of context. Well, I mean, you don't really expect that they'd be listening. Well, I, I know that in their office, they can turn a button and get a network feed. Mm -hmm. They can do it. Jesus. Do you think they've ever listened? Do you think they ever really know what we're about? Like that last J.O. session we had, which is just like... With the previous 17 presidents of this, whatever company it is we work no, for? I don't think so. I think that's part of the problem. Hey, you guys are great. We want to let you know you're important to us. That's just uh, what they say to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. you're, you're very important to us. We'll see. All right, Alan, we're just frustrated. Just, you know, I, I, either, I'm either... sorry. I apologize for the frustration. Just know it's being worked on. That's all. Either fix it or make it go away. We're big boys. I know. We 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 can we can deal with the bad stuff. We have. sure have. If we you come back and that. say that's it, you guys effed up. You don't have a national syndication deal. So be it. I if have. you come back on the other hand and say, you know what, we're going to treat you just as poorly as we treated Laura Ingram, we say thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's got to be one or the other. Okay. You got to you know, you guys got to do it. You got to step up. If that's fair. I have one little warning though, and that is. Well, you know, if they tell us to go to hell after all this, yeah, that's not going to be real happy either. Sorry, I have to say that. Because the fact is... Oh, but you... that'll be a great show because that's where all the skeletons come out. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but I mean, you know, if they do that after all this, why put a, why were we put through all this garbage? That's what I want to know. Because like, like you said with the sandwich, for whatever reason, we're the show that they like having, but they don't want to do anything with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if at the end they don't want to do anything and they like in philadelphia I'll, be, I'll be very frustrated like in philadelphia where we had a contract a no-cut contract and they just decided out of the blue well we're tired of running the show so they just took us off they just and i'll tell you that and this is something you you people don't know listening to the radio they just took us off this is one reason we're mad my agent called me and said they're taking you off i said that's fine i talked to mike he said it's, it's their decision but then the program director has to go into the trade magazines and make a big deal about it. Don and Mike fired in Philadelphia. When the truth of the matter is, this company, which is supposed to live up to contracts, just canned our ass seven weeks before they had the legal right to. And we said, go ahead. But then they got to rub it in our face when you get some dumb program director talking to the, to the trade magazines in the industry we work in. Meanwhile, God forbid, I have Charlie Broyhill say one thing to one trade magazine, and they put a, a, a note in his permanent file. I understand that there's an infinity rule that there, no one in this company is allowed to speak to the press. But again, there's the double standard. It's okay for Tim Sabian to tell Friday morning quarterback that he's happy about the music and the consistency on WYSP, and now they're going to have a much better product and that people can listen to WYSP all day long. Read between the lines, because we are not on. You know, why can't, why can't this company just do things right? Why can't, if you're going to lose us, we said okay. Go ahead, drop it. Drop it seven weeks early. But then you've got to run it up the flagpole and embarrass us? Yeah, it's, that's bull -ass. Complete bull -ass. And that was the only issue we had. Because otherwise we were saying, no, we're not going to fight it. Go ahead. Do what you want. You're going to do it anyway. In seven weeks, go ahead and do it. But then he's got to beat his chest. Yeah, well, no surprise there. But there is a double standard within the company for certain people are allowed to speak to the press. Other people, they come down hard when they speak to the press. It doesn't make any the, sense. This is the only way we can speak to the press on the radio. <laughs> Ridiculous. So there's a lot of frustration, if you didn't notice. 
And we've been trying real hard to hide it. We really have. Well, I think it's yeah. good to explain. I mean, when you're dicking around like this for as long as we've been doing it. And all we're saying to you is make a friggin' decision. <sighs> Even if it's a decision that you don't think we're going to like, just make it. We're big boys. We'll deal with it. Oh, we will deal with it. Trust me. It's like I told Alan. Either the, there's, it's one of two scenarios. Either Alan is a very bright, savvy businessman who's paying us just ridiculous fu money to do this show, or Alan's the biggest idiot in the world because he's paying us millions of dollars while forty other radio stations are getting this show for a handy. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I'd like to think I'm uh, I'm the former. And I'm, you know, and Alan, because we're on the high road today, I'm not even going to bring up ad revenue. Because yeah, we're, once you, once because you we're on the high road today, we won't bring up ad revenue. Why don't you leave that? And we won't bring up accounting. And when you were on the phone today with our agent, did he mention the fact that, oh, yeah... You guys just took a huge amount of money out of our paychecks that you shouldn't have? No. Great. Well, we can call and yell at him, too. Well, now does everybody understand why we're frustrated? I think it's pretty clear. Yeah. Buzz, you, you're always a pretty good observer on this. I mean, we're not trying to bore people with this. That this is. I think you have very concisely outlined the frustrations that have been part of the show for months, maybe years. It's now. not rocket science. It's no. not anything that's really complex. And for the last time, we signed a contract on December 6th that goes into effect on December 30th, or September 30th a new five-year contract. But the paper that we signed on December 6th says, in essence, Infinity Broadcasting will do everything within power and everything reasonable to rectify this bad situation we have with, again, I'm using Dr. Evil quotation, syndication. It's been ten months. They did nothing. They did nothing until we finally came on the air and said, one zero six seven one zero five seven ninety five nine. So now we wait. After ten months of legal obligations, and all the horse s that we hear about, be loyal to the company. Be loyal to the company. Think about the infinity stations you're hurting. Well, I wrote back to Alan one hell of an email with a list of the infinity stations that have dumped our ass over the last ten years and and not given it a second friggin' thought. Anybody remember Tampa Bay? Anybody remember Detroit? How about Chicago? Those are not even stations that we were allowed to have a chance to go one full ratings book through. Right. It was like a, we're on the air a month and they just say, oh, these guys suck. We're taking them off. Mm -hmm. But I'm supposed to feel empathy for the guy in Buffalo who picked up the show a month ago? Who incidentally was sold the bill of goods on it <laughs> because he's just like Tim? And soon he's going to realize that the show is not really demographically in line with the station that builds its entire library about some stupid feature called Rocktober? <laughs> God. We just want in or out. In or out. We're happy either way. Just do it. I say that to you. I say that to Elliot, our agent. I say that to Scott with the yellow tie and, and to the other guy. Uh, uh, guy with the kidney stones. The guy with the kidney stones. I say to all you guys. If you don't like us talking about this on the radio, there's an easy way to take care of it. And I'm not saying fire us or, or suspend us or anything like that. Just handle it. Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> Got a call. Oh, that's funny. That would be our agent on the phone right now. <laughs> Paul Elliott. Yeah. Very good. Are you gonna... I, I guess he's listening from Chicago. Are you? Gonna, are you... That would be impossible, being as we're not on in Chicago. <laughs> are you going to call him, Alan? Even though the station has. Wait a minute. Are you going to call him, Alan? I, I always call Elliott. Very good. Okay. Now, are you going to call him right now, or are you going to call I'm him at eight o'clock? Call him at about seven o'clock when I know he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's his name. Hey, he does. Yeah, I think he might be kidding this guy. <laughs> All right, we have to break. Ellen, P.S. Our show will be very late today. <laughs> We're going to be running past 7 o'clock today. We'll do our best to keep it in on time. But there's no way we... I'm not, I'm not going to go five minutes and then play ten minutes of commercials now. So we're going to be running late today. Well, try, try to stay on time. Try to stay on time. 
I've had you on the phone for a half hour. You've said nothing. <laughs> I don't have anything to say. What do you want me to say? Why, and Alan, for the final time, why are we continuing these, these, these conversations when you, as you said, have nothing to say? We have everything to say. Either treat us like you would treat Laura Ingram or let us just do our show on WJFK. There you go. You know what that is, ladies and gentlemen, right there? You're hearing one of the great managerial minds at work. <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear him just suck in the air and go, <laughs> Oh, God. Alan, I promise, we'll try to stay on time. You try to do your job. Thank now that you've got the job. I will. Now that you've got it, try to do it. I will. I appreciate it. All right. and Whatever. And I mean this seriously. Unless you guys are going to fire our ass, do not call me. Please, don't call me. Don't call me tonight and say, hey, I, hey pal, I know that was shtick on the radio, because it's not shtick. Uh, listen, I won't call you. Don't worry about it. You call, you, you call me with either, hey, great news, we gotta, we're gotta, we going to work it out. Hey, or... Either way, it's going to be great news. Either we're done with this, or you know, or we got something to deal with. That's it. Whatever. But, folks, this is, you want to know what radio is like in, the, in consolidation? This is what it's like mm -hmm. when you work for one company that owns everything. And everybody's busy in a circle, Jay. Worrying about, you know, we we got to get the AOL for broadband on. You know, you got to get the mention about our our fab, our fantastic, uh, you know, partners. <laughs> Jesus. But nobody nobody cares about what's going on on the radio. Uh, you guys make me sick. But just remember, if we don't get an answer Thursday, we're going to take the low road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I should be lower than this. <laughs> Alan, we've not we've not begun. Wow. We, I, I, yeah. And I'll say again, I swear on my kid's life, we've not begun. Today was the impassioned speech that I would give to you jerk faces if I was sitting in a room with you. The one that I tried to give the guy the other day when he just said, hey, I come from a talent background. Yeah, let's just get it worked out. You guys are important. <laughs> Please. Okay, Alan, well. All right, guys, try to have a good rest of the show. And uh, we will. I'll, I'll do. I'll do my job. You I do. know you've got a phone call to make, don't you? Uh, I actually have several now. Thank you. Very good. Good. Oh, maybe some of the guys with yellow ties were listening, or word has gotten back. I doubt it. No. Yeah, me too. Any yeah. Any of the executives calling you to yell at you? Well, I, I don't know, but I am getting yeah. some phone calls, so I guess I will return all the calls. Right probably now. just your friends saying, uh, "How can you let them bust your balls like that on the radio?" Oh. Alan? <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, they, you're right. It, it is probably just that. They make you look so stupid, Alan. Why don't you just tell them to shut up? <laughs> Not Alan. You really can't control it. Just tell them to shut up. Just do their show. You're the boss, Alan. All right. See you, boss. See you. Bye bye. <laughs> hang up. He's. Are you there? I'm here. You, you can hang up first, Alan. Oh, I can. Yeah. Oh no! How long, how, no, don't do this. How long? Don't how long do, do you, this like a Sacramento twenty-five-year-old? How long do you think till his wife calls him up and says, "Alan, <laughs> it's Betsy. You did a very good job." Today. <laughs> uh, you really stood He's up. He's going to stay this. on. He's going to stay on and do it. Hey, wait! Oh, I know they always wait. You know, we're we're not playing any commercials until you hang up. I thought that went well. Well, yeah, I'm glad we got it out. Yeah, you got it out. I didn't say much. You you got it out. Well done too. I mean, I think that's it in a nutshell. So that's our frustration, and I think everybody that's listening right now can understand exactly what our position is. And I'm truly humbly sorry that we wasted an hour of your time in your car when you don't need to hear crap like this. I know you get into your car to get away from crap like this, mm -hmm. but it's the only way we can deal with these guys because they. They're just not normal. They're really not normal well, people. Well, there is a very popular movement around this company, and you know the people I'm talking about, that say that these higher-ups are really not human life forms. <laughs> <laughs> they are from other planets. I've heard that. All right, so, Rob, we're only coming up on this break, right? Um. Yes, hold on a second. Yeah. All of these people this came in spaceships. This is the third segment that we've done. Exactly. So they came in space. Who cares? Two, they came in spaceships from the planet Procrastina. <laughs> they okay. flew down from the planet Procrastina, and they eat their young. We'll be right back with after after this commercial set. Uh -huh.
for like a minute. No. We, 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 well, geez, now this is really going to f us up because I want to get home and watch football. Well, you <laughs> don't 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 leave the pro planet procrastinate. We'll be right back. <laughs> At 5.41, there we go, JFK, Live 105, 96 Rock, no rain but cloudy tonight, tomorrow, low in the 60s, high tomorrow, 75, 77 DC, 79 in Baltimore and Ocean City. WJFK. And in my club, I will splash the pot whenever the f*** I please. WJFK. Sing our name. It's on in my show. Uh-oh. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. Are they strong? Listen, bud. They've got radioactive blood. Don Geronimo and Michael Mara. All right, now, now it's like that awkward time. See, normally if you're in a relationship, like with your wife or right. something, you get to have makeup sex. <laughs> Not <laughs> always. Well, okay. <laughs> you're right. Not always. <laughs> but... But most times you have makeup sex, or at least you have that that period. Where I've, I've had makeup sex. I know what you're talking. But, about. But you yeah. have that 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 part of time where you you walk on eggshells. And yeah. You know, you know everything okay? We're coming back now. We're doing the show. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to dive right back into the show. Absolutely. You've heard all of the the junk that we've we've had to say. Mm -hmm. The phones are all ringing, and I'm sure there are people who would just have questions. Yeah. Some people who would, and there's nothing that's been screened. Some people would want to yell at us. Some people would want to uh, take our side. Mm -hmm. Some people would have questions. Mm -hmm. Right. Should we handle them all lovingly? <laughs> <laughs> just to balance the last segment. Should we do something uncharacteristically, even if... No, I'm not going to say that. Because if I say that, then that's all the calls we'd get. Hello, JFK, Don and Mike. Hello. Hi, Don and Mike. Howdy. Hi, I'm a member of the media. Are you allowed to talk to me? <laughs> what media do you represent? Um, uh, yeah, I'm out. My mom's a whore. Okay, thanks. <laughs> that's a good out. Thank you. That man was lying. Hello, Don and Mike, JFK. No, he wasn't. His mom hey, is a oh, his mom is a whore. Mom's a whore. I, I was talking part. about the media part. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Don. Yeah, Mike. Mike. Hi. Yeah. Hey, I'm calling from uh, your guy. I followed you guys when I was down in uh, Maryland. And uh, I... Yeah, hold, on, listen, and I hold on, hold on. I had to delete that out because you're not allowed to talk about the ratings company. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. But we, uh, but we appreciate what you had to say. Yeah, you, you guys are great. And I can't understand, you know, every time, you know, Howard bitches about it, you guys... And, and you pay X amount of dollars, and these guys aren't taking care of you. No, it's and, not. And, listen, and it, like I said, let me explain. It's not. It's not even a money issue. Right. It's not even a money issue. It's just treat us like you would treat Laura Ingram. And we want to succeed. It is really a success issue. It is more than anything else. It is. It, you know, if if this is the way you want it to be. If what you say to us and what's been said to us is you're very important, I'm quoting here, if that's the case, then, and you want us to be part of this thing, then let's do it the right way. That's really it in right. a sentence. That's what we want. Right. Otherwise, if you're not going to do it the right way, just, just, just blow it up. And also, you know, take, we, we even offered, you know, get the nuts and bolts out of it. You know, we don't need to, to, to worry about all the, 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 the money stuff. Right. We'd like to just have that over here where we don't think about it and then you guys go ahead and do it but if you're not going to do it right then don't do it at all god we're going on it again we've given them those options yeah. now right I, I promise you we have we've not come into this like raving screaming lunatics no. right. i mean well we have but really for us we've been pretty balanced hello don and mike jfk hello hey don mike rob buzz i love you guys and nice. uh just glad to uh you know hear some explanation about what's been going on yeah i think that's good and i think it was overdue yeah yeah you know you've been hinting, hinting at it for a while and you know kind of picking up this just so you know we've never we have never come to to our employers and said if you don't do this by a certain date we quit yeah we've never done that and well, even now we still don't understand what's going on mm -hmm. they yeah. took us off last tuesday they took us off the network it wasn't our decision to be right. taken off the the uh, the <laughs> the network. It was theirs. They got really. They got no idea what's going on here. They're dealing with two guys who are really pussy cats. If they came to us and said, "Listen, let's make this work. We're gonna put some resources into the show. We promise. We'll worry about everything else later." 
I yeah, swear well. to God, we'd shake hands and say, deal. Absolutely. Yeah. On the other hand, if they came to us and said, boy, you guys are really pains in the ass, and now you're talking about everything... F it. We're going to blow it up. We yeah. Again, shake hands and say, okay, we got a deal. Yeah, uh-huh. and if they, they put it that way, that's that we can accept that. Yep. That's Speak to us want. in our language. That I is love real. you guys. Thanks. And, that's uh, all we want. I'm looking forward to Thursday to see what happens. Yeah. Now, and Thursday, I, I can't promise you that you're going to get a, a lot more yelling and screaming than you got today. And well, maybe it'll be yelling, but the, the stuff we said today was passionate. It's really how we feel. That's yeah, all the truth, and it's true, yeah. About what's going on. We just gave it to you the way uh, we've been giving it to everybody else and, and explaining our side. You know, somebody had to finally hear what's going on because I know everybody in Sacramento wonders what the hell's going on. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what the hell's going on. Mm-hmm. And really, to be honest, your station, KHTK, as far as I know, has done nothing about this. That's part of our frustration, too. Uh, I can tell you the stations that have been concerned. Live 105 in Baltimore, 96 Rock in Ocean City, and KCJJ in Iowa City. Mm-hmm. They're the stations that have called that have said, hey, what's going on with the show? What can we do? All of the other stations are like, oh, we'll turn the switch on. They're on today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we're not even, it's not even a money issue. It's an, it's an issue of, if you're going to run us for four hours on your radio station, make us a priority in your radio station. Make sure you promote us on your air. Make sure your listeners are aware of the show. Give the show every chance to succeed by promoting the product on your radio station. But the deal we got now is, you know, some guy in uh, Little Rock, he, he's going to hear this segment tonight and think, well, crap, I don't want to run this. And he'll just take it off. And no one from the network's going to call him and say, don't do that. They'll just say, please run the network commercials. Right. For the next 30 days. Mm-hmm. The network commercials that Mike and I aren't getting paid for. <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot of play. Yep. A lot going on. Anyway. Lots of plates spinning. You still there? Did I... Hello? Did we... Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're there. Hi. Don and Mike, JFK. Hey, guys. Hi. Love the show. One thing, and I'm, I'm glad to hear some explanation, too, like the last guy, but uh, I've done a lot of negotiation with different contracts and large media companies. The one thing I wish you guys would do for your own benefit and for everybody is stop talking about it because the scariest thing to guys like these are when you guys just shut down completely. When you're talking about it and getting everybody on the phone, then then they've got you. At least they've got a dialogue. But when you're completely silent, if they've broken your contract and they're not doing what you're doing. Yeah, but you see, we're we're not we're not going to extort them and we're not going to do that. Don just got done saying that. That's not what this is about. This is really us explaining to our listeners after a very long time exactly what's going on. We're not going to shut down. And you know what we could do? It, and we've been given this advice by people. Go in and just read out of the newspaper. Go in and do a very boring, bland show where, by contract, you're living up to what they expect you to do. Mm-hmm. But all that, that really just hurts the people that are in the cars. Listening to the show on the way home. And in fairness, as, we, you know, as much as the crap that we gave Alan... And here at WJFK, uh, you know, the, they are not, we're not going to do that to them. All right. Because, right. you know, the way it stands here, they have shown us in the best possible way that we are important to them here. We just want it resolved with. Right. Mm-hmm. We wanted it resolved five years ago. We wanted it resolved three years ago. They signed a contract on December 6th that said with every best intention, they would look into this situation. Anybody else in any business... You got a, you're running a shoe store, you got a, a deal, a guy signs a... Or a candy store. You, you're running a candy store, and the, and the Hershey guy signs a paper saying, you're not getting enough uh, uh, Hershey's with almonds. I promise that I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that your shelves are full of Hershey's with almonds. And it's ten months later, and you haven't gotten one, not one candy bar? You mean you wouldn't go back to Hershey and say, hey... Hershey, F you. You signed a worthless piece of paper. You look at him and you say, what are you guys, a bunch of squirts? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike, JFK. Hey, Don and Mike, this is Tom. They take the fastest road out of town. <laughs> take the highway. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike, JFK. Don, he left. He's out. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike, JFK. Rob, we got 30 seconds. Right. Hey, Don and Mike, how you guys doing? Okay. 
Hey, you guys are absolutely wonderful. I just want to tell you, I used to go, I used to live in Pennsylvania, listen to you on 94.1, moved down to the Manassas area, listen to you on 106.7. You guys do a great job. Uh, Don, I would feel bad if I were bored because the way you yelled at that, your, uh, your boss there, I'll tell you what, my armpits got sweaty, just listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Don't do any good with them though. Hello, Don and Mike, JFK. Hi, live, everybody. Live 105, 96 Rock. Hello. Hi, everybody. How you doing? We're doing great. Awesome. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hey. Hi, everybody. Hi there. <laughs> um, I, I, of course, I'm listening to everything. I agree with everything that's going on. I, I do understand. But I, as a listener uh, here in the D.C. metro area, I do kind of feel sort of put out. I, I kind of feel like, well, what am I supposed to do now? Oh, no, though... no, there's nothing. Listen, you, if, if, you, if you are listening to us on WJFK, mm -hmm. then I'm sorry that you're hearing some of this behind-the-scenes stuff. But the one thing we do know, no matter what happens, we'll be on WJFK for five more years. I, I got you. I got you. But it's just... And we just got to work through the stuff with the with the company on the other stations. But we'll we'll be here. And and we dealt with this a little bit today. And again, I apologize for that. We'll get back to having a regular show tomorrow. Okay. All right. Well, well, thank you guys very much. Well, thank you. I hope I hope you all have a good day. Yeah, we will. <laughs> all right. Bye bye. Okay. I think we'll we'll have a good night. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> gotta we got to do this because of that. Right. You know. And even, can I just tell you this? And Rob, give me 10, 15 seconds. Ready? Here's another way that we're being good guys. Do you remember back when we did the afternoon show before, when we would go on and on and on, and we would stay on until 8 o'clock sometimes? Right. The company came to us and said, guys, please, as a favor to us, the company, mm -hmm. would you end the show at 7 o'clock? We love the fact that you're on past 7, but would you please make a concerted effort to end it at 7? It would really help us with the advertisers. And we're doing that. You did. And we're doing it. And we're still doing that. We're doing it. And you know what they give us in return? D-I-C-K. Be right back on JFK. 553. W-J-F-K. Look, I'm not back in ten minutes. They call the cops. Standard operating procedure. Here's some standard operating procedure. Stay the f*** away from Tony Soprano. Shut the f*** up and listen. It's over. Kabish. Over and done. You call or go anywhere near him or his family and they'll be scraping your nipples off these fine letters. Yeah. How do you like us now? The Don and Mike Show. Two thousand show gone crazy. A kind word need not cost much. With half a loaf of bread and an empty cup, I found myself two friends, Don and Mike. Words from Iceland Air. Icelandic Cowboys. From the menu. Hello, Don and Mike on 1067, 1057, 959 at 604. Hello. Let's speak to us. Hello. Yeah, hi, you're on the air, Don and Mike. Hey, guys, what's going on? Hey. Uh, there's really only one important question here. And that's, uh, now that you guys aren't on YSC anymore, does that mean I don't have to listen to that drunk eagle faggot anymore? <laughs> now, come on, he was one of the listeners we had there. Oh, Actually, Jesus. We had to cherish him. I'll tell you what's going to be. F you. Oh, he killed me. Jesus, right. what an idiot. Thank you. I'll tell you what's going to be interesting for us is monitoring the progress. Mm -hmm. of, or lack of, of that radio show. Yeah, well, we're, we're going to be very interested to see uh, how, how things go. We uh, we take it personally. Now that... Real personal life. Mm -hmm. Now that, the, you know, the excuse is gone. Yeah. You know, how do you explain the fact that... And our last book, we were not even allowed to live out our, our last book in Philly. Right. We were in 12th place. Mm -hmm. 12th place. Not world beaters, not on the bottom of the pot. Not at all. How do you explain the rest of the radio station falling apart? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, we always wondered that, and we will be really keeping a close eye on that and uh, passing along the we'll results. We'll broadcast to that to whoever is still listening right. to this show. <laughs> Hello, Don Mike, JFK. Buddy. Hey, buddy. What's going on, Don and Mike? Hey. <laughs> That's the second what's going on. Yeah. What's going on? What's going on? Have you... Monday, baby. <laughs> We're burying our souls on Big Monday, baby. God damn, you guys have a lot of commercials. I've been on hold for like 15 minutes. Well, Get we, used to it. <laughs> well, we had about an hour of nonstop talk, and that's why we got backed up today. Yeah, no, I know. I talked to the screener. Uh, the, uh, I'm glad I, he summarized the show for you. <laughs> Joe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was talking to the screener that, like, you know, the last that one hour bit was pretty good, even though, I, you know, I'm hammered here. Oh, really? it was, it was, oh, yeah. there you go. Shock, you're hammered. 
Oh, yeah. Get high. Wait, the weekend wasn't enough for you? No way. <laughs> what is what is the uh, the vice of choice? Mike, I think Mike might like this. Amstel Light. Amstel Light is yeah. Light. That's that's. I drink, I drink uh, that. Uh, that Michelob Ultra now because it's the low carb beer, but I used to drink a lot of Amstel, and I'll still drink Amstel. You sure. know, uh, it, have it's, you seen it's those stuff. commercials though that uh, Miller Lite has uh, like only zero point six more? C- well, that's carbs. what Miller's doing because you know Miller Lite is is uh, also a low carb beer, and uh, they don't specifically advertise the fact, mm-hmm. and now they are because you've heard so much talk about the low carb. A lot of people are drinking low carb beer because so beer sure. has always been known to have so many carbohydrates in it and uh it, it's funny because you see those commercials uh, and they're responding to each other and i hope they come out with more i heard rolling rock is now coming out with a uh, with a low carb beer and, and look at me you know I'm, I'm lost three more pounds you know what i drank all weekend what'd you drink my own number one <laughs> <laughs> yes the skin color has never looked better <laughs> well i i watched my favorite movie uh water world <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have with, to actually stimulate yourself with kevin costner absolutely yeah because you know that's the open Opening scene, if, and if right. you've not seen that movie, consider yourself lucky. <laughs> the opening scene is that the water's covered everything on on Earth, and there's even though there's there's oceans, there's no drinking water. So Kevin Costner has made like a Gilligan's Island type machine, sure, where you go number one into it and it purifies your number one. And of course, the title, you know, Water World. I mean, yeah, you you can watch movies with Mulholland Falls, you know, all all sorts of things. <laughs> but I just drink mine right out of the tap. Yeah, yeah, oh. and that's that's yeah, it's a tribute to your flexibility. Don and Mike, JFK. Hello. <laughs> I just want to know, can I be your manager? Because I can sit around and do better a job at doing nothing than he can. Now, let's not slam Alan. He was very patient. Well, I mean, he does nothing. For no, you're right. To no, I agree with you, sir. Everything on the air. You're hired. I agree with you. on the air. I agree with you. He's worthless. He's just he's a worthless stool. Ah, Thank right. you. Bye-bye. Take care. See you later. <laughs> you're, you're putting him on point today, aren't you? You're putting him on the point of all the other guys. Well, it's because because we're taking the high road. We're not mentioning the names of the other guys. Ah, very good. Okay, so like, Alan, that's the reason. Like yellow tie or kidney stone. <laughs> yellow tie. Yellow tie. Yellow tie. They may oh, get there. Ah, yellow tie. Oh, yellow tie. <laughs> oh, yellow. Oh, O L E. Oh, yellow tie. O-L-E. <laughs> okay. Now, I had a moment with my wife. Two moments. God, this seemed hours ago. <laughs> um. One moment, I'll, I'll have to summarize very quickly because we're running so late. We realized that we as a couple, without Bart, are having to redefine our relationship. Sure. And we're having new boundaries. And, and, and we reached the pinnacle where I, where I said we need to call reinforcements on Saturday night. We've been together all day Saturday. She uh, did yard stuff. I, I, I brought the stuff down to the Salvation Army. We went there. We went to Home Depot. We went to Best Buy. We went, you know, we went, we went all these places. We end up going to dinner at a nice restaurant. And I've been with her now nonstop on Saturday for, I don't know, five or six hours. Right. And really, and I've tried. We've driven around and run these errands. And I've tried, like, you know, how is your sister? Uh, what, what's your mom think about her birthday? Big birthday coming up. And finally, we're sitting at this restaurant at uh, the Ruston Town Center, sitting outside about 6 on Saturday night, having a drink, waiting for the Yao to come over and take our food to order. And we, we both have martinis. Mm-hmm. And my wife said to me, where do olives come from? <laughs> and I said, um, I, don't, I guess the ground. And she said, "You didn't have an answer. I would think you'd know that." I mean, this is now. This is what we got into. Because I said, well, "I guess the ground." She said, "Well, no. There's that restaurant called the Olive Tree. They must come from a tree. They do." And I said, "Well, we've now hit a new low because <laughs> this is like a bad episode of Seinfeld because we are discussing where olives come from." And <laughs> did you this, both have olives in your martinis? Yes, we did. Very good. I said, this is like one of those things when I was in school when they'd be teaching something. Why are we discussing something that I will never, ever use at any point in my life? I'm never going to be on Jeopardy and they're mm-hmm. going to say, where do olives come from? Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> what is a tree? You didn't give her the right answer, though. What was it? Well, what should the right answer have been? Ask me where olives come from. Where do olives come from? 
The Olive Man. Olive Man. <laughs> olive Man. Olive Man. So, <laughs> Olive Man brings the olive. So, right. at, at that point, she says, well, what do you want to talk about? And then I said, well, we've kind of exhausted it today. <laughs> I mean, we've... we've. Run- Did she ask the question because she knew the answer? No, she was uh, making conversation. Do you know where the uh, most olive trees are? No, and I'll say the same thing to you as I said to her. I don't care. Do you know where most olive trees are? Well, I thought we used to get most of our olives from the Middle East, but now California, I think, they grow them. California. And Portugal. Anyway. Thank you. No offense to both of you guys. Thank you, Rob. You know what? I'm sorry. Any chance to, like, flaunt a little knowledge is is wonderful. It's very good. I don't care. And I know you would have looked at me and said, I don't care, but I just, you brought it up. Yeah. I know I did, but I, I didn't bring it up to find out where they came from. I brought it up to point out, to highlight, to illustrate. Them. You don't even know that they come from trees, so you wouldn't care about. It. But I would think that if you didn't know that they came from trees, that you'd want to, you'd want to enlighten yourself in the well, area of the stinking olives. You eat tons of them. I hate them. And I don't even oh. like them, and I know where they come They're from. They're a garnish to, to put in my drink. Mm-hmm. They're a garnish. I don't, you know, garnish. I don't care where it comes from. They're the fit. Just, just put it in there. Just give me a nice big green one with the with the red thing in it. I prefer a twist of lemon, and those also come from trees. So anyway, it was at that point that uh, that she said, "What do you think Buzz and Marsha are doing right now?" <laughs> it was about six thirty Saturday night. I said, "I don't know. They're probably talking about olives." And then she said, "Do you think it's too late to call Buzz and Marsha?" And I said, "They weren't talking about olives. You see that Levitra he had." <laughs> I said it's Saturday night. We we can't we, you, you can't call something. So you wanted to bring in reinforcements immediately. Immediately, and then we decided no. You know we'll just call Buzz and Marsha. We'll make plans next weekend to to socialize like mm-hmm. adults with Buzz and Marsha. Right. And then for the rest of the night, you know, we we made you know the, the band. Wow, well, um, ooh, we're on. Look at that. We're up. Uh, we, did you realize we parked on the fourth level? Not, <laughs> oh, not wow. the fifth level. <laughs> that bad, huh? Yeah. And, and not that it's. Listen, don't don't. Get me wrong here. Not that it's bad. It's just you're getting to know each other. We had we had totally after all this time with the boy, we now just have each other to talk to. And when you're with somebody all the time Mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. we're talked out. Right, right. We're talked out. She was talked out. I was talked out. But we made it. We made it through. And then yesterday, you know, thank God, football. Well, you you guys will occasionally you'll stay back here, and she'll go to the beach, or she'll go on a trip here. It's been a while since that's happened. You went on vacation, and you spent every waking hour with each other. Every second. And now you 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 took your your son to college, and you you've been spending. A lot of time together, and uh, every second you seem to be enjoying each other's company, even with every the, second, <laughs> even with the lack of uh, conversation. Every second, every second, and I and I've been trying. It's to... better than solitude, I think. Oh, I know, and, and Mike, you're relevant. You're very relevant, to very. Me, Mike. Don't worry. And, and when we when we come back, I'll, I'll wind this up, and we'll get to Buzz. I'll tell you, and I know that that uh, Mike, you are relevant, and I know that I'm relevant to you because I received a phone call from Mike. On, on Saturday. Uh-huh. Very rare. And you know when I... And I'm not ready, just just incidentally, Mr. Man, <laughs> I'm not ready to, like, concede your point you made to me on Saturday. I'm not in any way, I'm not, shape, or I'm form. Not, I'm not, Don't think for I'm a not, second that not, Sunday's game I'm not, had anything to do with I'm what not, you said. I'm not. I'm not. Right. But you jinxed it. I did not. Down in my JFK. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Jinxed it. Hello? Hey, holes had to go loose Sunday. Hello? Mm. Mm. Oh, dumb guy on the phone who has something good to say. Hello? Hello? Yes, what do you want to say? Too bad. Forget <laughs> Oh, what was it good? What was he going to say? He's a really dumb guy. <laughs> what was he going to say? on the screen, dumb guy. <laughs> Wants to say there's also, a, also an Olive Garden restaurant. <laughs> so how do we know? Garden, because it's a garden full of trees. That's it's right. Quarter after six. Donna <laughs> Mike Show on JFK. WJFK. I'm Anita Horgar. Buck Melanoma. Molly Russell's wart. Not her wart. Not her wart. I'm I'm the wart. She's my tumor, my my growth, my uh, my pimple. I'm Uncle Wart, just old Buck Wart Russell. That's what they call me. Or uh, melanoma head. They'll call me that. Melanoma head's coming. 
Uncle. Major Russell is an uncle. WJFK. And we are the Don and Mike Show. Listen up, you BM eaters. From Washington, D.C. on WJFK. From Baltimore on Live 105. And from Ocean City on 96 Rock. You can call Don and Mike toll free at 1-877-365-3636. They're ready to believe. All my friends know the low. Yeah, right, right. Doing an adequate job. Don and Mike. 626. Don and Mike show on JFK. Live 105. 96 Rock, Ocean City. No rain, uh, cloudy. You making this up, Buzz? Yeah, partly. <laughs> tonight and tomorrow. Low tonight, 65. High tomorrow, 75. Now, JFK 77. Live 105, 79. 96 Rock at 74. Um, tomorrow, we don't have time today. Tomorrow, uh, and we should do it on Tuesday anyway, after all of the uh, Monday night games are, are done, we'll have our fantasy update. Very good. Uh, suffice it to say... Uh, Mike is the only one winning his game right now, but Bart has the Tampa Bay defense, Martine Gramatica, and Keyshawn Johnson going tonight. Mm. It's not going to be enough. <laughs> well, you and I have money on it. I'm betting we on have my boy. Twenty dollar bet. Wow. I, I'm, I'm leading sixty to uh, twenty now, right? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I think so. Sixty to yeah, twenty. Sixty to twenty. So he needs a forty point uh, game or more. And to come on strong, <laughs> you, you know, now the whole jinx thing is in my head again. Now, here's the deal. <laughs> I swear to God. Here's the deal. I was looking at you. And, <laughs> on Saturday. It's like, you know, he's got it ready to go. I <laughs> never Saturday. call him on the weekend. He's <laughs> got it ready to go. Now, this is, uh, Frida and I are walking out the door to start that this incredible uh, domino effect of going to the Salvation Army and all the, the Best Buy and all this other stuff. Neology. I told you. And yeah, Starbucks, we went to Starbucks, we went to Barnes & Noble, we did all this stuff, Best, uh, Best Buy, uh, Home Depot. As we're walking out the door, the phone rings, and I let her get it, because it's always for her. She says, oh, yeah. And that was funny, too, because you both answered. Uh, did you both, Was that this morning that you both answered at the same time? or? Uh, no, that was, uh, that was this morning, this that, you morning that we both picked up. Right? <laughs> but on Saturday, she says, hey, Mike's on the phone. And I said from downstairs... Mike, who? <laughs> because Ouch. you know, and Mike, no offense, I don't call frequently. I don't, you know, I really don't, and cer certainly not on the weekend. I call, you know, we we have lots of conversations during the week, right. and but mostly they're initiated by you because you're dealing with the agents and all that stuff. So I, I I pick up, and here's uh, Charles. Hi, Charles. Same thing happened when he called me. Yeah, I got another <laughs> telepath over the weekend because <laughs> I had a question about fantasy, and I never called Charlie, and so Charlie. <laughs> picks up the phone and he goes, what is your question about fantasy? <laughs> it just pisses me off. It's like, okay, I know I'm predictable. So here's the deal. I never get a call from Mike on the weekend. It's 4 o'clock. We're walking out. I say, hold on, honey. Let me talk to Mike. I go, hey, hello. And here's what I get. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> now, this is exactly how you were. Hello, baby. He said, I want you to know the Red Sox are winning 11 to nothing, baby. It's a bloodbath, baby. <laughs> and I said to him, and, and I'll say this to you guys, and I really mean this. I don't care enough about the Red Sox like Mike does. I'd be happy if one year he won the bet. Sure. Because it's no skin off my nose to go to a titty bar with Tom Gavin. It would make you extremely happy. You know. For the Red Sox to make the playoffs. You know how much emotionally I put into it. I, I put way way, way too much into it. I know you have. And you called and you were happy. And I said, I want you to know you're jinxing it. I don't wish you ill will. I really do hope that this year finally, for the first time, the Red Sox do win a bet for you. But you're jinxing it by calling me maybe now. You're, maybe you're right. But I, I, I know. I you're, know. You're jinxing it. You just should have... Let it go. No, I gotta call you when I'm excited and, like and that. I gotta call somebody. My father's dead. My no. brother-in-law was on vacation somewhere where I couldn't reach him. I'd already called my you, nephew and I had to call somebody you else. You told me, you said, I'm calling, and that voice you said, I'm calling every sports fan I know to tell them <laughs> the Red Sox are winning 11 to nothing, and baby. You said I jinxed it, and you might be right, because I came back and lost yesterday. And, and this is just, I know we're on Live 105, and I know this is a message to, to the people of Baltimore and to the Baltimore Orioles. Look, I, I, you're a fine franchise. I think you've got probably one of the best stadiums in baseball. It's a great place to see a ball game, And I know you've got passionate fans up there, but... 
Listen to me just for a second. You're out of it. There's no winning anything this year. Just do me a favor. This series, last one of the year. This man is deranged. But could you lay down for my guys? Could you just give them the series, please? I mean, not the series, but a sweep. Could you? Because you've really been playing us tough this year. And you'd be happy if the Orioles just came out and I'm said... terrified of the Baltimore Orioles. I think wow. the Baltimore Orioles play the Red Sox tougher than almost any team, and they have this year. And they scare me, and I, I'm really uptight. You can tell me, like, nervously scratching my hand like I am right now. You know, I, I, it's it's... But you jinxed it. I'm You've not, already you, lost. Huh? You've already lost because you jinxed it. No. You never call. No. You never call whether it's a football game, if it's a one-game bet. You call me all the time during games. Come and on, I, I, But when I call you during games, jinx anything. I just call you. We're not betting anything on it. I didn't jinx anything. I'll just call you like and say, boy, Farb sucks today. I didn't jinx anything. It's going to be fun. <laughs> no, it's a jinx. No, it ain't. If you look it up, it's a jinx. You've got a bet with me we've had going for six months. I know. The obese David Wells came up with a big game for the Yankees yesterday. You know, the, the, the guy that tugs on his scrotum more than any other pitcher in baseball came up big. Really came up big. you got to admire a performance, a performance like that. And now, uh, you know, I have developed like a rash or something. You are going hand. to the scratch off all of your skin. Maybe it's this subject that gets me going. But, yeah. I'm, uh, you know, it's good and it's bad because it's so... I forgot. When they're out of it, I'm not, like, stressing. I'm not watching the television and stressing out. I'm really not. And it's, uh, you know, and when I have my kids, you know, I, I'm not the father that I should be part-time with them I mean, did, because I, I, did, I put did. a movie on for them and I, I just, you know. You did mention that to me. I, mm -hmm. I said, so you're jinxing it. And you said, no, life is good. The girls are watching a movie in the other yeah. room. I'm watching the Red Sox win. Baby! It was it was fun. And, you know, and they get into it. And uh, it's... it's uh, I didn't jinx it. You jinxed it. We'll know tonight. Mark my words. Tonight will be the no, telling. We will not know tonight. We will not know for another well, uh, did three I, weeks. Did I watch jinx? The division or the fact that they're going to the playoffs? The playoffs. Because by calling me yesterday in one of 162 games, yes, a big series against the Yankees. I know how I can reverse the jinx. Oh. How? Uh, if they lose, the next game they lose, I'll call you. Done work. You've already you've already put the fix in. Then why don't you call me that when they lose? <laughs> hmm? Because I hey, come on now. You know it'll work that way. <laughs> you said you don't care. You know it means a lot to me. I got a whole network of people that I talk to. All right, but it, but would it matter if it was half if it was half assed on my part? I don't know. If it was lip service. If I don't I think. I don't said, think hey. You know what? Uh, enough of this. I don't think that I jinxed them. I think it's fine. I think they're going to continue to uh, play good baseball. You jinxed them. I didn't. You double jinxed them. Now you're gonna see. Now, now I will not only if they don't make it to the playoffs have this, mm -hmm. you know, have the the usual agony. But now it's just more agony if they don't if they they don't make it. You know, I'm a you Red jinx... Sox fan. I'm filled with angst. No, but I'm this, filled with doubt. This is a sports universal. This is whether you have something riding on the game or not. I, I when when you have a rooting interest in a team, I was mm -hmm. euphoric, and your team goes up. I was in such a great mood; it was so much fun. And you know what? Even if they don't make the playoffs, I don't care. I had a great weekend with them. They were fun. You jinxed it, though. No, I don't think so. You jinxed it. Well, we'll see. We'll wait. Well, well, the know, proof is in the pudding. I, I know. I've done it with Broyhill countless times, where I will call him up and go, ha ha. <laughs> Not your day today, my friend. No, but here's why I don't think I jinxed it. Because the call to you was not really, because I know you don't care. I know you actually, I part of you actually wants them to win. It was really a call to, to share as much as, it was not the, the gloating right. call. The gloating call would be when they clinched like a playoff position. Then that would be the gloating call. This call was but just still the Red Sox, Yankees, 11 to nothing. I'm the guy you got to bet with, though. Yeah, maybe I, you're right. Mm. I'm, I'm the jinxie. I or hate the, that. The, I hate the, the, the jinxer. You said something that just bugged me right off the... When you said jinx, I was thinking about it like for an, uh, no. about half an hour That's after. Hold Did I jinx them? Did didn't, I jinx them? Didn't I really tell you? I said, don't. I said, stop this because you're going to jinx it. Well, it was too late, though. I jinxed no, the yeah, phone call. Yeah, yeah. I was still gloating, baby. <laughs> and I said, uh -huh. Tom and runs. Tom amps and runs. A shutout. I said, stop it. You're going to jinx it. And then you just you kept going in that voice. I, did, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I, I was, you know, if I'd had a phone book next to me, I would have called people at random. <laughs> that's how excited I was. But then they didn't sweep them. And, uh, you know, it was kind of a drag. And that's it.
You know, so. but we'll see what happens. And uh, once again, um, and, and I mean this because I, I really do know that we have a lot of people that enjoy this show in the city of Baltimore. And you I just ask them. you, I ask you for this particular series, really. Give me a J I N X. Just to, to make me win this bet, lay down. It's a J. Lay down against the, uh, the, the, the Red Sox tonight. And the other call I got was just from Rob. Made me laugh. I called, <laughs> called right about kickoff time yesterday and said Merry Christmas to me. <laughs> <laughs> because for me it's like Christmas Day. Uh, ah, that's right, the first day of the football season. Because all because all the games were on. And a weird day too. Kind of a weird football day. Yeah, we'll have our recap tomorrow. We never we never got to it today, but incidentally I will take a Red Sox win and let Bart get seventy points tonight. Does that mean anything? I don't think so. <laughs> it's a nice picture. It's not a gesture, Buzz. Oh, okay. Hey, Kurt Warner's a retard, though. Yeah, well, that's oh, my starting QB. As retarded as my man Brett Favre was. Let me go to Patty! Kurt, Kurt Warner was, was worse. And one more, just a, a very <laughs> quick football observation. Yes. Rob is not the biggest football fan in the world, but he's got a team in the fantasy league. Uh -huh. Calls me up yesterday. Says, turn on the Saints... And the Seahawks. Okay. Is that all right? I turn it on. The show, the coach of the Saints, Jim Haslett, they're losing. They're 24 3. He says, Who's he look like? Sorry. And who? I don't know. He says, Gold member. <laughs> <laughs> now you got it. If you buy the internet, do an ESPN search I'm, I'm on Jim it. Haslett. I'm going to do it in the commercial break. Because I'm telling you. <laughs> it is. I, I was watching the rest of the game, waiting for him to pull his skin off and eat it. Jim Haslett, New Orleans Saints, just by the, and not Goldfinger, Gold Member, Gold Member, Austin Powers, oh, right? In a world where owning a radio was strictly forbidden, <laughs> one man found a way to bring good news to his people. Here it is. Me. He made it up. Hi there, Buzz. It's 637 on JFK, Hi. Live 105 and uh, 96 Rock. What is your lead story today, Buzz? Today, the president makes a speech that's going to cost us a lot of money. Mm. That's not Jim Haslett on your computer. Well, it, Google says it is, but I don't know which Jim Haslett it is. No, that's that's some dork. <laughs> no, this is Jim from, Haslett from Des Moines. <laughs> this is Professor Jim Haslett from Des Moines. Exactly. <laughs> okay, stay, stay tuned, tuned for news and comments, news and comments. Coming, coming up on the Don and Mike Don Show. Don and Mike Show on WJFK at 638. There you go. That's yeah, him. That's All right, right, look at that picture right now, Mike. I know we're running late today, but look at the picture. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. 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 Right? The hair. Flick the hair. Yeah. Right? Yeah. From the boy. <laughs> Made me laugh out loud. There we go. <laughs> On JFK, that was very professional. WJFK. What's the word from Planet Crackpot? WJFK. And we are. The Don and Mike Show. Uh oh. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. Master haters. Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. It's 48 running a little late today. Don and Mike show on WJFK Washington Live 105 Baltimore. 96 Rock Ocean City. It's time for a Buzz's News Show now. Buzz brought to you by Veramax Sexual Pleasure Performance Enhancer. Someone call for a doctor? It's doctor developed, clinically tested. Veramax works. Get it in Rite Aid, GNC, and other select retailers. Try it today. Veramax, one triple eight. Try VMAX. You know, I just you're not twitching, but I saw you checking your No, I was itching my hand again. Oh, well, I saw you checking your thing. No. You sure? No, I mean, no, I'm fine. No, I'm actually... Because uh, yeah. normally we'd be leaving now. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm okay. fine. All right, Mike's got his kids tonight. Oh, yeah. And we're running really late tonight, well, so... And football's on tonight. I'd like to hear the first part of... Uh, and that's why I want to get out of here as soon as possible. Sure. Yes. To watch football. <laughs> I want to get out to watch football. But <laughs> I, I, I gotta, that's why. I, I got to stay. <laughs> oh, give us the news. Well, here it is, then. <laughs> I know. Come on. The president was on TV. We've all had a hard day today. <laughs> it's been an interesting day, though. Sure has. <laughs> I wonder how Alan's day is going. Who knows? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> exactly. F him. <laughs> The president was on TV last night saying he'll ask Carl. Alan Line One is not available right now. Oh. He's in the hallway picking up a penny someone had dropped. Press one to leave your message now. The F you. <laughs> There's the message. There it is. The president was on TV last night saying he'll ask Congress to double the money American taxpayers are spending to rebuild Iraq. He says he'll ask lawmakers for an additional $87 billion to continue the work there and in Afghanistan. I thought he looked particularly goofy last night. Yeah, he did. And, and Buzz, yes? I, like all Americans, support 
my president, mm -hmm. even if I don't necessarily agree with all, all this new military stuff we're doing, yeah. but really, I mean, they should rent the movie Wag the Dog. we got to get a Hollywood guy in there mm -hmm. to, to help him yeah. to learn how to read. Hey, if it hasn't happened by now, it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, but last night... He has no... Seal tail. Here's, here's, he has no cat feet. When my, when my uh, wife and I were down at uh, Clemson, uh -huh. dropping Bart off uh, about a month ago, right. when we were watching the local news, we were amazed at the pronunciation by the local w w weather and news readers. Mm -hmm. They would s s go like this. A man today said <laughs> a car hit him and the car was a red car. A car has been spotted. The police are looking for him. Mm -hmm. This is the way I ask you not right. that our guy, nice Bush, the, the most powerful man in the free world, yeah. was speaking last night on TV. The current action will require a great deal of sacrifice for all of us. Yeah. Well. It seems like... You know, right after 9-11, he was, he was doing okay with, with mm -hmm. the speech. But that last night was a little weird. Yeah, very Maybe strange. it's the pressure. Who knows? It could be. Uh, $87 billion is based on an estimate that rebuilding Iraq will cost $4 billion a month for at least another year. The president says he knows it's a sacrifice, but that we'll spend whatever it takes to win the war on terror and to make this country more secure. Yeah, the only thing I'm thinking is we spend all that money, what, and during that, that spending... They're going to be guys blowing up our military guys every day? Yeah, and well, as a matter of fact, uh, we've lost more guys since the president declared the major fighting over than we did before he said that. Uh, the White House says we'll also spend the billions we'll get from the Iraqi oil fields for the rebuilding effort in addition to the American taxpayers' money. Well, very... Meanwhile, some guy's making a tape talking about how, you know, the, yep. we'll forget 9-11 with yep. the, you know, I mean, it's, it's just uh, with the next attack. I mean, very lucky Alan Linewan doesn't run Congress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the terrorists say they're not letting up on us, and Al-Qaeda audio tape out yesterday threatened strikes on this country so devastating they'll make us forget the September 11th attack. Hey, you know what, here's, uh, uh, let me just say this, uh, not to you, Buzz, yes, but to all of the uh, mainstream, because you're definitely alternative Yo, media. Oh, way alternative. But the mainstream media, listen, and, I, and I'm not saying this literally, but here's my feeling on this. If you got it, Bring it on, and we'll deal with it. Otherwise, it serves no purpose as we get closer to 9-11. Who are you talking to? To whoever the bad guys are. Oh, Some, bad guys. Someone right. should just say to the bad guys, if you got it, or whoever's getting this information that they're on Al, Al Jazeera, whatever the UPN, whatever the network right. is, yeah. <laughs> there's no need to come on and say to Americans, hey, a bunch of crackpots have made another videotape, and they say, this time you're going to suffer even worse than before. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, you're saying that the mainstream media downplay that crap. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Announce it, say, hey, some more idiots have put a tape out, but two years have passed. Yeah, I mean, right. when they, I think really the people that make those tapes, serious or not, mm -hmm. when they make a comment like, this will make you forget 9 11, that's specifically designed to infiltrate our media. I believe that, and I think sure. the war on terrorism isn't just confined to finding the terrorists, it's confined, you know, you've got to attack. Their propaganda as well. That's and you know what? Anybody terror. that went through that, you hear something like that, it makes you pause. It doesn't freak and that's, out. And that's why I said, uh, bring it on. That, you know, rather than hear this on the TV and see the concerned news anchors going, another threatening yeah. videotape. Mm -hmm. I'd like one of them just to s put a finger up, the middle right. finger up, and say, hey, we're not asking for it, but if you're going to fight, come over and try to start something because we're going to be ready for you this time. And even though you might knock us down, we're going to get back up again. But please stop with this frightening us, you know, That's, getting close to September. I agree September, what they do, yeah. Getting close to September 11th. Yeah, throw that away. Throw it away. You know, just look at it. Hey, there's another one of those tapes. Chuck it. Chuck it. I right. mean, why break in? And, right. and it was breaking news on CNN. Right. Sure, exactly. You yeah. know. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Do they break in every time some idiot in America makes a nutty videotape and sends it to Bob Saget or... <laughs> well, they're starting to. Whatever yeah. the guy's name is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Who hosts that now. Tom Bergeron. And Tom Bergeron, excuse me. Hey, look at the guy get the whiffle ball on the balls. The multi-talented Tom Bergeron. Yes. <laughs> well, as the anniversary of the 9-11 attacks approaches, people are thinking about what they will or won't be doing that day. 
on the concert circuit. Thank God that all of these performers are not performing on 9-11 bus. I can't think of anything that's more ridiculous than, than this list of performers. I think it sucks. Springsteen, Steely Dan, Fleetwood Mac, Aerosmith, Kiss, and Cher say they will all take the day off. They say they don't want to be disrespectful, and they say they don't want to make themselves and their audiences attractive targets for terror. No, right. no wrong. Yes. Right, because Cher, you're so goddamn talented and popular with how many... How many farewell tours has she done to begin with? This is what this is. The, they have public relations campaigns mm -hmm. that say you don't do this. Right, REM and Willie Nelson now have look, shows if you're, on if Thursday. you're paying respect, it's one thing, but mm -hmm. don't come out and say we don't want to make you attractive targets. God damn it, that is stupid. REM and, and Willie Nelson say they don't want Jesus. terrorists to keep us from carrying on, so they will right. do shows well, on Thursday. You know, whatever it is to them, no. No one's going to go to those shows. <laughs> well, maybe R.E.M. Oh, and Alan Line one has come out with a statement. Yes. He has vowed no decisions on September 11th, <laughs> which incidentally is our drop dead day. And so that's living life as normal. Uh, the right. TV networks will cover the daytime memorials at Ground Zero, but primetime programming will look just like any other night this week. Good, and you know, I'm not even really sure that we should be devoting network time to, to a long, drawn-out, all-day thing. I mean, it should be on the news. Yeah, I but, agree. But beyond that, you know, we're kind of getting back to regular life. Yeah, yeah and then right. I, I saw not that not that we shouldn't remember it, not that right. we shouldn't feel bad for all the people that, that that died. I saw the public service announcement. It makes more sense than anything I've seen on the matter. It's like the terrorists want to destroy our way of life. Right. The best way to show that you have not destroyed our way of life is to live our lives. Keep living. And that's live right. the way we've lived. That's and that's right. the way we ought to continue. And Mike, that means share. Please do your tour Thursday night. Please. <laughs> share. Yeah, I don't think you want Effing to share. <laughs> and the effing share. I thought she was gone. On. Would you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it from Springsteen. I'll take it from Kiss and from Aerosmith. You know, with Cher... In, in, in Springsteen's case, I think perhaps you're dealing with the the tribute. I'd like to know what his quote was. I don't picture Springsteen saying... I just don't. Yeah, you know, that, that he's not going to do it because he doesn't want his audience to be a target. I don't. I hope. I hope he's not saying. that. Frankly, I think he'd be thrilled if sixty thousand people showed up to see him. Mm -hmm. I mean, have you seen the ads now? Yeah, they're running TV ads constantly for. And we're running radio ads. It used to be, and they came to us to do a promotion. Wow. Yeah, remember, used, remember the days when you couldn't get that ticket? Yeah. <laughs> now it's like, hey, hey, what do we got to do to get on the Dynamite show to give away some of these tickets? You know what you have to do. What? Call Jacqueline Vargas. <laughs> They're jinxing it. They're jinxing the Springsteen concert. The California governor's race just gets sillier. Uh, got to stop you right okay. there. Okay. Yeah, it gets sillier. Because Mike's got to go uh, take right, care of his right. kids. Yes, I do. Okay, so we'll see you tomorrow. All right, thank and you. Everybody man. else, thanks for your patience. So you'll be right back at 6:58. Don and Mike show JFK Live 105. <laughs> see you, bud. Good night, Mike. Bye <laughs> I love when Mike gives me the, the showbiz. The point, yeah. The point that, you know, yeah, you. <laughs> you the man. You, baby. <laughs> right. Okay, there he goes. All right. He's got to go be with uh, be with his kids. That's that's a good thing. He's doing the right thing. Buzz, we'll be right back. Very good. At 2 until uh, 7. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, Mike, stop. He's leave. pointing again. Stop pointing. Leave. <laughs> WJFK, et cetera. Baby. Donna Mike Show. WJFK. Gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. WJFK. Yeah. Right. The Don and Mike Show. Well, it's the Don and Mike Show. He's gone. This is ghetto delicious. I'm here. They love to get festive. Don and Mike. And he's here. And howdy, howdy, Buzz. Hi, hi Don. 709. JFK, I think the other ones are gone now. We might still be on an Ocean City on 96 Rock. Maybe. Hope so. If so, hi. Uh, the uh, California... Hold on. What? Here is the, uh, the hotline. Oh. Hello? 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 <laughs> I wanted to tell Don and Mike. <laughs> Hello? Yes, go ahead, sir. Hello? You're on the air, sir. You're go on ahead. the air. I just wanted to tell Don and Mike that uh, I really like their show. Hello? They're really good. Hello? Could you, could you turn your radio down? <laughs> <laughs> See, now you can turn the radio up, Mike, and you won't hear me saying that to you. I think he hung up. Mike? As so many of them do. 
<laughs> Rob, you never should have given him the hotline. <laughs> you never should have given him the hotline. I mean, Mike was just being goofy. Yeah. So I said what I say to all guys like that, eventually, when they just won't listen. Right. F U A hole. <laughs> Mike really laughed. <laughs> we all did. Uh, the California governor's race just gets sillier. Arnold is offended that the soon to be recalled Gray Davis is making fun of his accent. Quoting Davis, you shouldn't be governor unless you can pronounce the name of the state. Hold on, Buzz. We're yes. getting another call. Another call? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi, that's fun, isn't it? I love that. <laughs> that's fun. You want to do it? You want to do it? I got the highlight. Yeah, can I do it? Go ahead. I'll delete you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got. I hope I got it. No, Mike uh, said it too. No, I got it. You want to do it? Let's see. Oh, yeah. Can I do it? He doesn't trust me. He doesn't trust me. Eighteen years. You don't trust me. I'm not going to hit the the dump button when you say after people you said. No, I trust you. Come on, horse sock. Yeah, I trust you. <laughs> I just listened to the show driving along. This is a good show. <laughs> we we got to go. Thank you. I know you got to go and sleep. Have a good show, Don. Thank you. I wish Mike was here. Bye-bye. I hate him. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. There he goes. Well, Arnold Schwarzenegger's people say Gray Davis owes an apology, quote, to Arnold and every other immigrant who comes to California in pursuit of the American dream. But Davis reminds us that Arnold voted to deny public services to illegal aliens. Yeah. Most of the money from Hollywood celebrities is still going to candidate Ariana Huffington, Arnold's only big-name contributor so far as Kelsey Grammer. Clint Eastwood can only offer advice to Arnold, quote, be careful what you wish for. Kelsey Grammer is the only guy. The only Hold big on. name. Is yeah. it Rob Lowe? Uh, hold on a second. Hotline again. Not in money, though. Hello. Hi, Don. Hey, Robbie. It, no, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, it's Robbie. I'm looking at you. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, I just wanted you to call, but just, just to have you call in. Oh, hi. You, you didn't have to be Arnold. Oh, okay, I don't know where you were going. Who's on this line? Oh, hi, bud. Hi. Hi, Rob. Oh, now that's better. Now it's just between us. <laughs> How you doing? Good. Hello? Uh, Joe? <laughs> now, this line's on the air, Joe. Charlie? Hey, Rancho. Well, I had to delete that out. <laughs> that leaves us in a select club. I Where are you calling from? Your ass. <laughs> hey, now, why would someone say that? That's inappropriate. Call her. Don, I just want to... <laughs> Don, I just want to say something. I think you guys, while you're a bit pompous today... You were right on about Infinity Broadcasting. God, what a bunch of hang offers. Finally, someone who really gets sensible call. Don, I think you had a lot of good points, but I think you should give Alan a couple days. <laughs> you, just want, you want to make me hurt you. You want to make me use the delay on you. <laughs> I got to go. And Bill? Yes, yes, Don. I'm real sorry to hear about your penis. No, my, my penis is fine, thank you. Better than ever, actually. I was. I meant the pills. Yeah, I know. We we got to get out of here. Okay. Just forget this Arnold stuff till tomorrow. All right. On to sports or on yeah, to what do you yeah, want to do? Yeah, sports. All right. Sports. The has sports then weather. Don't okay. your kicker. You got it. Yeah, that's the plan then. In sports, two men with fresh haircuts died of gunshot wounds in a barber shop coned by the NBA's Alonzo Mourning. Hey, more good publicity for the NBA. It's going to sell tickets, I think. It happened Saturday in an upscale <laughs> section of North Miami, where police say the three or four hooded gunmen seem to be delivering a message. Morning and his agent have no comment. Oh, and tomorrow on the show, uh, we will get into the uh, Kobe Bryant case ah. with uh, noted uh, historian Dr. James Capers. Oh, wonderful. Uh, the season debut of Monday Night Football will feature a rematch of last season's NFC title game between the Eagles and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Philadelphia. It'll be the first regular season game played at Philly's new Lincoln Financial Field. And I'm rooting for... Oh, hold on. Oh, no. oh another call? Hello? I just called because I thought it's what you would do. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Bye. I'm, hanging, I'm hanging up now. Okay. Bye. Bye, Mike. Bye. I think he's right. No rain, but cloudy. The golden boy. Cloudy tonight and tomorrow. Low tonight, 65. High tomorrow, 75. Right now, 75 in D.C. and Ocean City, 78 in Baltimore. And finally, some guys just can't keep their pants on. 
in Norman, Oklahoma. <laughs> Police arrested a newspaper carrier after stopping him for having a broken tail light. They arrested him because he was naked. He told them he'd been carrying papers from his uh, car to people's front steps for three second. weeks that hold way. On. Hold on. Another call. Hello? Hi, Buzz. Hi, <laughs> hi, Don. Hi, well, how can you be calling? I thought you were here. I am here, Buzz. Oh, now I'm used. It's me, the Don that's worried about your penis. <laughs> well, and it's me, the Don that thinks your penis is fine. Wow. Which one do I believe? Me, Buzz. <laughs> I know what's going on down there. I appreciate your concern. Don't listen to him, Buzz. I won't. And don't be offended by this, but I don't care about your penis, because you know it's a man thing. Yeah, that's right. Listen to me, Buzz. Yeah? I'm concerned about your penis. That concerns me, sir. I'm a faggot, Buzz. <laughs> that's what I was concerned about, perhaps. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Listen, caller, I know you're not a faggot. You're just being funny. Actually, this is a setup call. Oh, really? This is a setup call, and I'm going get to get to the punchline. Okay. Hi, everybody. It's really Don. I'm not calling about... My penis. penis. No. I'm calling to say, don't forget, stay tuned for Larry Michael and the GTFI Ritz <laughs> Radio mm -hmm. as soon as we're done tonight. Thank you, Don. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Oh, and Don? Yes, Don. <laughs> Great bit. <laughs> right back at you. <laughs> Out. Out. <laughs> we are grown men. In Largo, Florida, a man walked into a bank, into the restroom, took off all his clothes, went back into the lobby, and laid down on a bench where he went to sleep. He may have been drinking. When police awakened him, he mumbled something like, this is a bar. Go away. This is Larry Michael, Westwood One, Notre Dame Radio. <laughs> I'm Buzz Burbank on the Don and Mike Show. Thank you, Buzz. All right. <laughs> Pleasant experience. We'll uh, see you tomorrow with the uh, brand new episode. Mm -hmm. You're getting a call, Don. Hello. Hi, I'm Buzz's penis. <laughs> All right. Good, hey, good day to you, sir. Good day. Good day. Buzz, uh, good day to you. Good day to you, sir. All right. And, uh, Robbie. Do I have time to tape something? Okay. <laughs> Let me just say, BM Eater, Infinity Broadcasting, only a bastard. So we meet again. This is Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice. And I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging. <laughs>